Folks, good evening and welcome to the Situate Board of Selectmen. The time is uh, 6.36. Uh, anybody recording this at this time? All right, just to make sure for the open meeting. Uh, seeing that, I'd like to move to, ex I mean, obviously, aside from the fact that the town's recording it, of course. Thank you, John. Um, I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order and have uh, an acceptance of the agenda. Move to accept. Second. Moved by Mr. Norton, seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Moving on to agenda mm -hmm. item number two, which is a walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins? Seeing none, uh, moving on to agenda um, item number three, which is to meet the applicants. In this particular case, we're talking about the Water Resource Committee. And on tap, if there is um, Mr. Clarkson. Mr. John Clarkson. Here. Could you please come on up? Have a seat, please, sir. Thank you. Um, and thank you for coming. Um, your credentials are impeccable. I went through them and I said, wow, uh, I can't wait to have somebody like you getting involved. And I'm very thankful that you have gotten involved and for, certainly encourage more and more people in the town of Situate uh, who would donate their time to get involved for things that they can certainly lend their expertise and, um, and helping out the town in various departments. Um, You're so very kind. I, I haven't done anything yet, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, you know, I always say this, you're only as good as the sum of its parts. And, you know, people who get involved in various professions can certainly lend their expertise to the various boards and committees. And, you know, a lot of people will say, I don't have time, or, you know, I, maybe I need to commit a lot of time. And I always say, try it. Try it and find out, you know. Um, and you're helping your community, and, and I just commend you. You're looking to get on the uh, Water Resource Committee, which is a valuable committee to this town. And um, so, any event, I, I have no questions for you other than saying thank you. Thank open you. up to the board for dis any questions. None. I've known Mr. Uh, Clarkson for a good many years, and everything you said was absolutely on the mark. I would also Thanks. just add that Mr. Rosen has recommended him highly. Mr. Rosen, chair of the committee, has recommended him highly, and his expertise is definitely needed. Thank you. We don't take the vote right now. We probably should, but we wait until the end of the meeting. So my, my suge suggestion so might be... I can go home and tune in? You can yes. go home and tune in. <laughs> You can go, go uh, home and not tune in again. You <laughs> <laughs> have to tune in and tune out, uh, you know, uh, never mind. Okay. Um, right. No questions, boy, this is an easy one. Yeah. It is, but we appreciate it very much. All right, All right. thank you. I Thanks appreciate you your time. I appreciate your consideration. Thanks a lot, John. Uh, moving on to agenda item number four. It's a discussion vote um, of the fiscal year 12 budget and articles. And in this case, we're looking at the annual town meeting, article three, which is the capital improvements plan. I know that we had this discussion uh, two weeks ago and again last week. Um, at this point, Eric, would you like to come forward? I, we're, this is what we're dealing with. It's your... And what we're, just so that we understand, there is a discrepancy between uh, the town administrator's uh, suggested capital improvements and the capital... Uh, Planning Committee improvements, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me, uh, the discrepancy is that originally the town administrator had requested that $500,000 be set aside for seawalls in town. Also, she was looking for, um, um, let's see, that was 500000 I think what you were suggesting is that of that $500,000, not you, but the committee was suggesting of that $500,000, $300,000 would be allocated towards additional security um, to the school, uh, the town administrator had recommended 300,000. CPC was recommending 600,000. CPC had also recommended an additional, I think it was 170 for a bus uh, and a van. 90. What's that? An additional 90. Uh, uh, 90, okay. Yeah, 90,000. 90,000. Uh, town administrator recommended one bus. CPC is recommending two buses. Uh, on top of that, there's another $30,000 for water pumps. Town administrator hadn't recommended backup that. Generators. Or generators, backup generators. Town administrator did not. The committee yep. did. And we're, what's the remaining um, 70,000? And there was, let's see. No, that's basically it. Okay. So at this point, the board needs to go forward and make a decision as to what it would like to do with respect to the. Uh, town administrator and the community, uh, the not community, but the capital planning committee, um, so that we can put whatever we would like with respect to capital improvements on the um, article for town meeting. Mr. Murray. Uh, as we sort of discussed last week, um, and you were very appropriate saying, uh, 
you know, it's just a recommendation and all this, but we pretty clearly said last week that uh, <coughs> we were all in favor of keeping and retaining the seawall repair in the capital plan. And I, and I strongly think, you know, we need to do that. I, I think that's an immediate need. And, um, you know, I think you guys missed the target on that one. You guys do a really good job on, on most things, and I understand where you're coming from, but my personal preference would be on that. I also just want to add that there's a bunch of other things on here that the committee and the town administrator agree completely on. Um, there's a lot of stuff on here on um, ambulance replacement, duct work at the library, and a bunch of other things that you guys vetted, or you, your team vetted very thoroughly, and uh, you know I thank you for that. Um, bus and van replacement and the backup generator for the wells, I really don't have any comment on. Um, because in particular the capital plan committee added to them and I know we do need them. <coughs> I really paid most attention to the seawall repair because they took that off the list. And so in the spirit of, you know, I know we need backup generator at some point, so I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not gonna go to the mat on those things. I don't know the finances of, of the implications that is on the out years and so on, which are compelling arguments, but that's where I am on this. Uh, just to, to follow up on the seawalls, and I was not here last meeting, but uh, I couldn't agree more with Mr. Murray, especially after what we saw uh, last December down uh, on Oceanside and 7th Avenue. And, and that, as we all said at that time, and it's absolutely correct, that's only the tip of the iceberg, that seawall that, that uh, uh, caved in on that day. Uh, we just cannot go any longer without putting some money somehow, somewhere in the seawalls. So if it has to be piecemeal over the course of years, uh, so be it. But we just, we can no longer wait for the, the you know, uh, for another year on that. That's top priority, I think, in my mind. And I, you know, I initiated the the uh, uh, security system, or I, I thought of the security system a year ago, and I think it's a great idea, and I continue to think it's a great idea, you know. But I'm not so sure that replacing the $300,000 seawall to security is the way to go on that. I just, and I, I'm all for the security. I think we're, it's long overdue. And, uh, but we can't do it at the, at the expense of the seawalls, I don't think. Seawalls are top of the list, sir. That was, uh, I'll go out to Tony. That's a, a Tony. Uh, Vance? Yeah, I was just going to suggest uh, the town treasurer gave us some information here so we can figure out what the impact will be yeah. in the out years. I don't know if she wants to come up and explain it. These two sheets. That would be helpful. Their landscape. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> my concern with the capital plan is the impact that it's going to have on the budgets in the out years, which is what it's always been for the last 10 years I've been doing this. So, um, the needs are definitely there. It's whether how we want to pay for them. Um, so, I um, asked her to pull a little bit of information. I just got it right now, so um, so if you can help me understand it, Jane, that'd be great. Sure. Um, this sheet here um, that has fewer numbers on it, um, what I did use in the three different scenarios, uh, the question at hand is about three pieces of equipment, the pumper, um, the ambulance, and then the bobcat. Um, they're all, we're only talking about general fund, and we're not talking about any debt exclusions or anything, just to clarify that. Um, statutorily, the borrowing term limit is five years for equipment unless otherwise voted by the selectmen. <coughs> so um, we can go out for the years uh, if the town were to decide to do that. So plan A is those three pieces of equipment at um, 10 years and the total cost of the borrowing principal and interest is $2,332,600. Um, plan B is those, it has those three pieces of equipment at 15 years, and that climbs to 2.4 million. And the last one, Plan C, is 2.2 million. Um, obviously, the cheaper of the three, with the savings um, compared to the 15 year plan of 167, almost $168,000. Um, the second sheet underneath focuses on the impact of the general fund. Um, and that has the three different scenarios again. What I put in each scenario is the existing long-term debt. That's, we're already committed to that. As you all know, I'm in the middle of doing a sizable bond issue, um, and there's about two million that's general fund debt. 
So I've added that in, and then the last um, example on each one is the impact of first the 10 years in Plan A, 15 years in Plan B, and the five year. So you will see what I've highlighted, it looks gray on your sheet, is the total, at this time, the estimated general fund debt budget. Which of these plans are we leaning towards? Or do we, well, we? That's what we have to decide. Okay. We, we, but before we get to that, yep. I'm, I'm looking at the um, forecast for this year, and it had interest, debt and interest of 1180. 1180? That's what we used. Is the, so I'm, when I look at fiscal year 2012, existing long-term debt, and you have 1463, did you, did you take out the debt excluded? Um, yes, I believe so. Um, so here, that, because I think when we spoke earlier, it was 600 plus 400 something. I, I don't know how it got up to 1.5. 1 1.4. 1 um, my spreadsheet is so extensive. I, I could run back to my office and just take a quick look at that. I don't know if I have all the. I, I guess my point is for both the town and the school side moving forward and as we start talking about the override if you know if the debt is going to go up for instance let's say these numbers are accurate and we want to use plan a this year we put in we'll say 1.2 for rounding purposes in the forecast for the number if it's going to go up to 1.85 so there's six hundred fifty thousand dollars more worth of debt expense that's going to hit both the school and the um, municipal budgets at two-thirds, one-third, so there'll be, you know, 400 and something and 200 and something worth of additional expense on both sides of the ledger. Um, and that's what I just want to get my arms around before we put more things in there, particularly as we talk about an override later, because if we think that the school has a need of one number, that doesn't include any additional um, debt and interest from from the from both purchases from from the bounding we're about to do and the bonding we would have to do am I saying that yep understandably so so do we so want to do we want to revisit because it's it's about four hundred thousand dollars worth of a variance that I'd want to just make sure right, which I can check on but even I mean, that would be consistent all through. If it is the dex exclusion that's included in the, uh, that is offset by. That's a good point. Right. Um, so the bottom line would be the same in each. And again, what we talked about earlier, um, because I would be in favor of doing the five-year statutory plan, um, but you have to look at both sides, I guess, because the cost um, is certainly um, worth looking at in almost $168,000 worth of interest being saved. Um, yet the impact impact in a few years is higher on the general fund. Right. Um, but what, what we're doing is we're taking a pumper and amortizing it over five years right. when the current one has been around for, Chief Judge, 25, 25 years. Right. right. So the life expectancy of that is probably more than the statutory limit. But maturing the debt faster then gives you flexibility um, to put in um, – additional capital debt from next year and the following year and, and to continue that to try right. and, and catch up on. Just has a larger impact. Right. Yeah. About $150,000, dollars a year. Like mortgaging your house over five years. So where do we stand? I mean, I'm, 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 I see this as, I'm more inclined to say, I mean, Jane, this is your your area of expertise as well as the financial advisor and of course you know it's going to be both yours and the financial advisors purview to really tell what's going to be in the best interest of the town when you go out um, and set the bonds or certainly the bands short term but then the bonds for the long term right uh, well what I said to Tony earlier is that this is a snapshot at this particular um, instance of time and it's difficult we're talking about doing a bond issue two and a half years <coughs> from now so um, just as with the plan that I did for the current debt um, budget when I was doing it back the end of November, early December, um, I was going to put some of the debt in short term. Uh, 
upon the advice of my physical advisor, Tricia and I spoke. Um, we decided to put everything into the bond issue to take advantage of the favorable rates in this environment. It's very costly to do a bond issue. We don't want to be doing them every year. Um, but I would be in favor. Um, well, first of all, I wouldn't want to commit. It's two and a half years. So um, right now, I would say go with the five years. And if for some reason, you know, we felt there should be a change um, two and a half years from now, then we could discuss it at that time. But I would be in favor of the five-year equipment plan. And that's a cost savings of 167000 Right. Subject to spend. Well, that's the, the long-term interest savings, but again, it's mortgaging your house over five years instead of 30 years. So you're taking a piece of equipment that's clearly going to last more than five years, and you're saying let's amortize it over five years. And the impact is going to be $400,000 worth of interest in year three. three. Now, did you say there's a le I'm sorry. I need to be recognized. Mr. Should Murray, I should raise my hand. Sorry, Go ahead. sorry, John. Did you earlier <coughs> say that it's a statutory limit unless authorized by the Board of Selectmen? Right, and we've done that before. We'll be doing that for the current bond issue that I'm doing now. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, when I was doing the bond issue in June of 2008, it got very complex because um, there were all kinds of suggestions from everywhere to extend term limits. Some were going beyond the statutory limit. So. I really hesitate again to commit two and a half years from now, you know, to say we're going to definitely do 10, we're going to definitely do 15 or 5. Um, I think I need that flexibility to make the decision at the time. If you ask me for my opinion, I would say the five years. Um, okay. I, I, if I, if I may, I agree with her that we don't have to make our decision now, but this is going to impact number nine when we talk about that um, in terms of the needs for an override if we've got another $474,000 worth of interest expense coming in instead of, you know, a much smaller number. Mr. Norton. <coughs> Jane, that would probably, that would probably have to be an agenda item to, for us to override the five years. Um, I would think. You no, know, you would do it. It would be part of. It, it will be part of the bond package. Um, we'll be taking care of all that. Um, okay. The sale date for the current bond issue is March 9th, and the sale uh, the dated uh, 15th or the 17th. So that will be in the paperwork. That will be a requirement by okay. bond council. So you wouldn't need a special agenda okay. item. Okay. In okay. terms of my planning, future debt budgets are in Trisha and the capital. <coughs> more so Trisha, I guess, from the funding part of it um, for future capital. I mean, there's additional capital in that extensive plan that's been created. So if we don't have some kind of room for maturities, then it'll be difficult in trying to put those in there. So, Mr. Norton? Yeah, I think just to reiterate what, what Tony's saying, I, you know, we have to keep in mind, I guess is the best word, that by voting a capital plan, we are incurring costs down the road that we don't have now, both on the school side and the town side, you know, an interest cost, and, and that, that has to be recognized. It's not anyone's fault. I mean, it's just a, it's just a fact of life. Uh, but that is a fact. It's, it's, uh... Mr. Harris. Uh, just getting back to the seawall, the $500,000, and I couldn't be more in favor of it. What could the town expect for the five hundred thousand dollars? What would we, what would we, without holding you to it, Trisha or maybe Dave Ball or somebody can answer? Well, what we could would the town have expect? The funds available to supplement any MEMA or FEMA money that we got, as you recall, that's why the two thousand seven MEMA work is being done because we didn't have our cash match till now. It would also, I assume, at some point, be used to repair the seawall breach um, on Turner now. Um, but also there's other seawalls that had been identified in the Vine Associates plan along the Sand Hills area um, to do that. But um, Al is here and he might want to add more. But mostly to really um, start to address the, the list of rupees that we have now as well. Mr. Murray? Just as a very brief confirmation to everybody, we're only talking about public seawalls when we're talking about spending this money. This is only for public seawalls, not private seawalls, 
public's involved. All right. So, Mr. Chairman, Mr. My, uh, Michael Hayes. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick comment on that, John. I think there's a number of them on the list. So they're not at the bottom. The road uh, security equipment's right up there at the top, and the emergency generator are right up there, and the bus. So it's not at the bottom, anyways. I mean, keeping in mind, if I may, Mr. Chair, but I think there was one about $13 million worth of capital projects I presented initially. And, you know, the ones that made this list <coughs> are not the bottom. I mean, the, the, the 11 or 12 million that didn't make the list, I suppose, because, and they're not even the bottom. They're all good projects, whether no, it be it's, school or town. not a bad project. Either. No, there really isn't. So, you know, I, it, it, I think that maybe to say that, you know, that they get moved to the bottom of the list may not be accurate. That's all. What I said, Joe, was that it is inherent in the, in the process It's a 13 million, I think, for, on both sides. Both you know what sides. I mean? It's not oh. just the schools. It was, and just, exactly. I, I'm sure a lot of them avoid it, but it's, you know, we just can't spend 13 million dollars on capital. Yeah, it just I can't see. be done. Why don't you just uh, okay? Hold sure. on, folks. Yep. All right, <clears throat> Mike. I, I have to respectfully disagree. I mean, the capital plan came last year. It was the worst plan I had seen when I've been here. And the one thing that was instituted this year was a grading system to try to go through everything as to what departments need and everything. Now, maybe there's some tweaking that needs to be done. I'm not going to say that, but at least this is the first year we've had a rating system across the board. And with all these items that we're looking at, we're looking at a fire truck, a new pumper that we've needed for the past five or six years, Chief, not longer, an ambulance, which is another major issue for health and safety we're dealing with. We've got seawalls, which all we need to look at is December, uh, the Christmas uh, uh, blizzard to find out, you know, what what happened there on a wall that was rated as a B, and yet it it failed, um, you know, to a bobcat that they need for the um, for the Department of Public Works. I mean, I, I just see in the security systems. You're right, 300,000 is going this year. I'd be willing to bet 300,000 is going to be placed on next year for the schools so they can get the security system. Um, so it's a matter of trying to spread everything across the board here and. Duck work for the library, um, bus replacement, you know, emergency generator for the school, survey equipment so the <coughs> town can do its own surveys now instead of hiring survey companies and spending obscene amounts of money for engineering companies so we can do it in-house now because we have engineers for once. Um, water replacements, you know, for infrastructure. Uh, and dredging, dredging the situate marine park, which may sound like it's a small thing, and yet it generates a lot of money for all the boats that come into our town that we're able to use. Um, so, I, again, I, I, I think Trisha's done a wonderful job doing it. We may disagree on it, but I'm just, I know you've mentioned it before, but I'm kind of at the point where we've gone through this process. Eric, with all due respect, it wasn't great last year. It was awful. 
and this year I feel like we have some credibility to say these are things that are desperately needed. So, but in any event, I, I go too far afield. We need to move this on. So, what would the board like to do, Mr. Murray? Yeah, thank you. I, 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 I'm almost on the verge of making a motion, but I don't know what I can and can't include in the motion. But in terms of the dollar figures and so on, having listened to this to conversation, I would like to revert back to the, if you will, original plan of the 500,000 for the seawall, maintain the $300,000 of the security equipment for the schools, rather than increase it this year to 600. I like the maintaining of the 300. Maintain the school bus, one bus at 90,000 as opposed to two at 180. So we are improving on the schools. And, you know, every little bit helps on the financing. So remove the 30 grand, 30,000 on. That's in the enterprise fund. Is that on enterprise fund? Yeah, okay. So, but the question I had was being sympathetic to Tony's points and Joe saying that we, you know, probably need an agenda item or it's sort of the other thing, but can we at least sort of signal our intent here on, on how to um, fund the debt so it doesn't have the, the, the negative impact that Tony's bringing up and that everybody's drawing attention to? And I, I don't know if that's how to go about doing that, but I, you know, these are very real concerns. We've all said there's dollar impacts. So it's, it's a tough trade-off, you know, you pay Can't we do this, Jane? Right? Can't we go and say, okay, in a year's time, if you're gonna go and bond it, then you have to come to us to take a look at it for the impact for both a five, 10, or 15 year. If you're, end up, if you're gonna end up doing it in two years, which, you're gonna, which is your maximum time, because you have to do it within two years, otherwise pay the penalty, come before the board so we can address a five, 10, or 15 year approach. Well, that's what I meant earlier, that to me, it's, and I know we need it for planning purposes, Tony and Tricia and Mary and I and the financial forecast, but it really is very, early to be saying definitively which way we're going to do it. Um, I just want to add, too, that Trisha and I, back in December, went into First South West um, because we are also working with Peter Frazier and his staff to create a very extensive um, capital funding plan, So, which we have to get back to one of these days. I don't know if you want to speak about that at all. Um, but it's to try and address all the needs and, and find a plan where debt is maturing to fitted into the schedule as it does mature and, and okay. you know, trying to work that fine line between uh, paying it back promptly, which is beneficial to the town to save money and also not having such a big impact on the budgets for the general fund. So yeah, I'm happy to come back. It would be um, the um, August of 2013. Uh, so I'd be planning you know, a couple of months before then that bond issue. So we could plan on, on our, and when we're anticipating for FY14, the impact, actually FY15 is what it would be. The first impact would be an FY14 with interest only. <coughs> and again, that's with the plan currently, tentatively, of doing a bond issue, doing a ban this August, um, ban Next. rolling it the following August, and then the one after that is doing a the bond, bond issue. Okay. Um, and we can even extend it more, would have to pay. It's not a penalty, it's a pay down, which would, once you're in the third year, you have to pay what's equivalent to um, a principal payment. Okay. Um, on An the interest, end, so. okay. Tony. Um, uh, just one question, then I'll try and make a motion. Um, th on the sheet that you have here for the, the impact of the upcoming bond right. on the debt and interest of $455,000, is is that just to the general fund? Yep. That is. So mm -hmm. of the nine million dollar bonding, of which seven of it is the betterment. No. Um, it's um, almost nine point eight million. Nine million seven fifty six is the bond issue. That other six million dollars is part will be part of an MWPAT loan that I'll be doing sometime over the next year. So the nine million dollars, how much of that is general fund ballpark? Uh, two million. Two million oh eight oh I think. So two million and debt for the two million is five hundred thousand dollars? Um that's principal and interest. So we amortize that stuff over um, statutory there are a lot of different purposes within that loan. We did extend some of it. Some of it's been out in bands for a few years and would have we've had to do pay downs. Um, so it's a mix of 20 year. Right. But you're sure that's just the general fund? I'm sure that's just the general fund. 
Here's what I would somewhat recommend, and, and I'll try and encompass this in the override as well. Um, you know, as we talk about the override, um, I've talked with a few people about maybe incorporating some of the capital into that as well. And um, I would suggest that maybe we take out the seawalls and the roads and include those in the override and pass and again I'm just dealing with that top bucket because that's the stuff that we're thinking about bonding the rest of it's being paid with cash or in the enterprise funds and, and moving forward with the Bobcat the ambulance the pumper and the security system which equal about a million dollars um, and then I would recommend that we include at least $500,000 worth of capital improvements to the seawalls and the roads through um, an override number we're going to talk about later. So your motion would be 2.779 minus 5, 3, and 3? Mine doesn't have a number on it, so I can't. Yeah, it does in the book. I follow you right, Tony. Is that right? In your book. I don't know. Um, yeah, just show me whatever. Just turn your. Yeah, is, that, gonna, is that the number? Yeah. What? 2.779 minus the 800,000? So you'd be looking at a, uh, a 1,979,000. Does that exclude those two? 800,000. 800,000, yep. And then if you <clears> wanted <throat> to include the backup generator for 30,000 in the water department, I have no problem with that. I don't. <clears throat> I have a tremendous problem with that. I'm like, this is for the seawalls, which, frankly, whether it's tied to the override or not, I don't think that's a, a great idea to doing that at all. Uh, I'm inclined to say this should be a part of our capital plan. It's a town public wall. It's already been um, uh, proven to be uh, destructible, causing health and safety of people who live in that vicinity. We have another compromised wall further up, uh, which could easily go in the next storm, another public wall, town wall. We've got to start banking money away. That's the problem. We don't haven't been doing it with seawalls, and you know to put it with the override. I, I think um, I, I totally disagree with that. In fact, that might actually affect my decision with the override. So I'm inclined to say that this has got to be part of the capital plan. So that's my position on it. And as far as the roads go, I mean, you know, I guess we could say the over the roads could go with the override. I think we still need to earmark money regardless of the override for the roads. We did it before in the past. Um, I think Trisha took it out of the budget last year. We've usually been doing as a part of the capital going forward. I think we need to include <coughs> it. If it, doesn't fa if it doesn't pass in the override, then the roads aren't going to be fixed. The wall's not going to be fixed. So um, I'm inclined to say, no, these are capital things that have to run concurrent with your budget. You have to include capital items with your operating budget. If we're just going to only fund you know, slight things, we're going to get further and further behind. I mean, um, so I I'm totally against that. Anybody else? Mr. Murray? Um, <clears throat> I'm very <coughs> sensitive to the financial impact of the funding of the capital plan, um, but I'm reassured by the fact that we're going to be able to, I think, from what I'm understanding, we're going to be able to deal with that right when that starts to hit in two years. And so I don't see... I don't see the harm in both. I mean, one, I am, I am worried, what if the override doesn't pass? And I don't mean at town, I don't mean here tonight, and I don't mean at town meeting, but I mean at the ballot, right? So there's that. But I like to think that we're putting forward a reasonable override, as we'll discuss later, and, and even if it does pass, then I think we're putting even more money into our roads and into our seawalls and dealing with infrastructure. So, which are very real needs and benefit, you know, all aspects of the town. Public seawalls, again. Um, so, but, so as long as the finance people are telling me that we have a relief valve that we can employ in the two years, when that big number hits, then I'm comfortable with moving ahead with this capital plan 
and the override. <clears throat> Without getting in the override discussion, but just so people are aware, you're going to see there's in the override there's we're proposing money for highways and or roads and stuff as, as well. So I think that the, you know the, the roads are in bad shape, seawalls are in bad shape. I think we can do both. It's, it's a, I mean, it's a roll of a dice. There's no question uh, <clears throat> that roads have to be addressed. It's, it's the state, <coughs> excuse me, has cut back on their funding uh, f for fixing roads. Uh, we're not getting any help from anybody. Uh, I don't have to tell anyone in this room the conditions of the road. All they have to do is look outside their front door, or drive up Grove Street or whatever. Uh, just, we just... We have to find a way to fix them, and, and you know, every, everything's important. Uh, if, if an override failed, I it would have to get like to see a commitment from this board that it would be put into the seawalls and the roads would be put in at a very substantial number in next year's capital plan. And I'm not sure we can wait till next year to fix these things if the sea, if the override fails, but I just. I would have to have. I'd love to I have to have something to to, to uh, some sort of a commitment that we're going to deal with these roads or these seawalls. And if it means putting it in, making a commitment now that it will go in next year's capital plan, maybe at the expense of just about everything else. Uh, I'd like the board to, to to give that a lot of consideration. Mr. Harris, I don't know if we could wait another year. I don't know if we could either. I, I absolutely agree with you. I don't know if we could wait. I, I run the risk of having it fail. I, could, I, I, well, I agree with what Rick said. I'd like to see it, you know, obviously the override pass as well as this capital plan the way it sits. But I think you kind of have to leave the capital plan at the 2-7 to a 2-8. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think the override is, will, will be a solid plan. We'll, and I, for one, will support that as well. Sure. Could we could we uh, reach a middle ground here and, and, and leave some of it in the capital plan and and put the rest yeah. of the override? You could put any of those items in there. Mm -hmm. My my fear is that in the year fifteen, the debt and interest. If you pick, I mean the relief isn't dramatic. It either goes from four seventy four to three hundred three, but the debt and interest is either going to go up eight hundred thousand dollars or six hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, wait. So, well, wait. Let's run those numbers. So, 474 to 303, that's 170. That's 170, right? Mm -hmm. And then you said, but the debt and interest is what to what? 600 to 800? Well, I just added those two together. The bond we're about to do yep. and the one that we're talking about doing now. Yeah, so it's kind of a, it's roughly $200,000 each. So it's, no. If we do all of them and do it over five years, the debt and interest is going to be four hundred seventy-four thousand dollars. Gotcha. Plus the additional three fifteen that we're about to do right now. Two lines above it. Right. If we do it over five, fifteen years, it's going to be three hundred three plus the three fifteen we're about to do right now. So the impact on the general fund budgets is either going to be six hundred eighteen thousand dollars or seven hundred ninety thousand dollars. Right, which is $180,000. The variance, yeah. The variance. So what you and have I, to think I, about is not not necessarily when, how much you want to amortize it over, but can you afford to buy these things? Correct. Now, I'm not disagreeing with your math, and I support your philosophy. I understand where you are on that. For me, a delta of $180,000 two years out, given the vagaries or the, the flexibility of what we have in that two years, you know, the economy might be worse, receipts might be worse, state aid might go down, it could be worse than that. It could go the other direction and be less than that. So just for me, $180,000, yes, that's 180000 of real dollars. But two years out, I'm not worried, or, or within the next two years, I think we'll be able to deal with that. Right, but can you deal with 474? Because if you don't buy any of these things, you don't have that debt. Yeah, but I think we need those things. We need these things and right many more. <coughs> so, all right, I'm going to getting back to my suggestion. Can we leave some of the capital plan? Is that a, is that an option? Leave some, let's, let's split it. Uh, 250 for seawalls, and 150 for roadway improvements. Leave that in the capital plan, 
and put the equal amounts in the override question? I, I would I would have to say no. I think we need 500 on the seawalls, and that's that's well, we've got to start dealing okay, with, with the right. issue of the seawalls. And um, if you want to take the roadway and put the roadway into the um, override, then I'd, I'd be fine. But I, I think at this point we've got to start banking money away for the seawalls. It's just you know. My <laughs> Go back to that de December. It's pretty <coughs> obvious, and you know we, you know I'd be surprised. I recognize a lot of people here. I mean, eh, the walls are old; they're compromised. There's going to be another breach. It's a question of when, and then we're going to have another major catastrophe. Maybe, hopefully, not a loss of life. But I'm saying we've got to start putting money aside. We're talking about an override. We're talking about our schools, which obviously are very significant to everybody in town here, across the board. But we can't forego our responsibility for seawalls for people who also pay taxes, who are concerned about it, who live in this area, who are impacted by it. And I know we're talking about amortizing, I'm talking about $180,000 this year, that way. The reality of it is, is that if we take option C, which is a five-year plan, you're right. We're going to be paying a lot more in the short term to save interest in the long term. However, it will have an impact on our general fund budget going forward, both on the town side, both on the school side. We can take option C or B, which is a 15-year plan, to amortize it over a course of years, 15 years. That impact will not be as significant. Clearly, it will impact the general fund, both on the town side and the town departments and the school department. But you cannot, at this point, after what we went through, say, no, let's put the seawalls, which are our obligation because they're town-owned, and say, let's see if we'll do it with an override. That's a very simple solution because if it fails, then we don't have the money for it. And I'm telling you right now, it's a capital improvement that we as a board and as a town need to do concurrently, just like we do with other things, just like a pumper that we need. We cannot put that up to an override and have the chances that the pumper doesn't pass because we need it, or an ambulance because the next time somebody calls for an ambulance and they can't get it because the thing breaks down or we're waiting for somebody from Norwell or Cohasset or from wherever else to travel, we need to be more self-sufficient. This is an obligation, and I think seawalls is very apparent. If this discussion were a year ago, I'd agree with you. But after seeing what happened to the power of the storm, you can't. You just can't do it. We don't have state funds that we're aware of. We don't, well, we're hoping to get state funds for it, which could take another two or three years. We're hoping to get federal funds that could take two or three years. We're still trying to get money for the 2007 storm. I mean, we as a town need to take on that obligation to start coping with it and dealing with it. And I think, you know, the people who pay taxes who are impacted in that area, which is a very large area, are expecting the town to do something. And, and I, for one, agree with them on this. In conjunction with what we're going to try to do, at our later, uh, later agenda item, which is to deal with an override um, for other things. So I'm, I, my position is you got to have 500000 in, into this uh, capital plan for the seawalls. Um, Mr. Ball, hold on one second. I'll have Mr. Murray, and then I'll come to you, please. I'm, I agree with you all on oh. five. You know what? We're going to have to, okay, very quickly, we were supposed to have a hearing at 715. Is the applicant here for 715? Is Mr. Um, John? Do you mind waiting for a few more minutes? You're supposed to start at 7.15, and I apologize. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chair, I will be, I'll be quick. Um, I agree with you about the $500,000. I'd like to leave for the seawalls. I want to leave that in there. I'm sensitive to the financial portion. We do have the override. Um, you know, potential option as well, but if the override fails um, and we do need roads, I know roads are very expensive. It sounds like $300,000 buys you a heck of a lot of road, but I think that's three miles. Is that right? It's no, about $100,000 a mile. Close to that. that <coughs> How much is a mile? One mile. One mile. 300000 is about a mile? Okay. How many, so, roads, how many miles of roads do we have? 109 miles of public roads. The reason why I just bring that up is I just want people to realize that whatever we're talking about on the roads, it's not like we're going to get $300,000 here and then fix all the roads by next Thursday. <laughs> okay? No. So... You know, to help mitigate some of this finance and, and recognizing, you know, Tony's points, you know, we have $300,000 here on the roadway. So, you know, I'm comfortable with moving that down to 150000 but I'm also um, comfortable with, you know, sensing my, sending my strong signal that next year I want that 150000 back in for the roadways, assuming that they're going to need it next year. But to help delay this on the short term and maybe move this forward, I'm comfortable with that. But that's pretty much where I am. Mr. Ball. Thank you. I 
stay in the golf body floor is that rug. Um, most of the people in this room at this point in time tonight, right now, are here because of the seawall issue, and we are urging the board to include the full five hundred thousand dollars in the capital plan for this year. Uh, Mr. Danahy has outlined exactly what our concerns are. Uh, the walls are in very poor condition in many locations. I would, I would add that most of the people sitting here either are members of the Situate Seawall Committee, the Situate Coastal Coalition, or one of the, one of the various beach associations. So it's, it's, a, it's a critical um, critical time for the town to get started with us again, and we are urging you to put in the full 500 dollars. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Banger, last word. Yes. So what the voters would be voting to do would be to put, say, $400,000 into roads a year forever. Is that the vote we would be asking them to make? Yes. Okay. In fact, we will be discussing, I anticipate we're going to be discussing just that, just that exact thing, sort of like what we've done with the water, where we've committed to, to improving the infrastructure, not just on those one year, but on the moving forward. That's an issue that we're going to be discussing, or right? we all hope to be raising during the override discussion. And Mr. Ball, you should too, you all should, you and your crowd should stick around for the override discussion as well, because infrastructure is not just roads, it's seawalls and other matters as well, which are gonna be discussed under number nine. All right, good discussion, gentlemen. Uh, we need a motion to move forward, 725. I'll, I'll, I'll move, going back to the, move the Board of Selectmen vote to support Article 3 Capital Improvement Plan as written for the total of $2,779,000 minus $150,000 from the highway line of the capital plan submitted before us today. So that includes seawall. It's the security at 300000 Two million six hundred twenty-nine thousand. That value, assuming Mr. Dan, he did his math right, then that's what it is. But that's the bus and the van at 90, and it does not include the backup generator. Second to that? Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? No. Four in favor, one against. No, I'm in favor. Five, unanimous. Very good. Um, that takes care of agenda item number four. And I am going to skip over because of our hearing to agenda item number seven, and we'll come back to agenda item number five and six right after, right after that. So if we could see... Um, Thank you, Eric. Okay. Agenda item number seven is I'm just trying to think. Is this um what do we got here? Mr. John, is it? Aida. Aida. Yep. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, and thank seven. you for your patience. Uh, this is agenda item number seven. It's a 715, but it's officially 725. Liquor license hearing on the Hummer Rock Tavern, LLC. 7 Marshfield Ave. And vote for a common vicular and entertainment license for Hummer Rock Tavern, LLC. And with you, Mr. Aida, is this, um, could you identify? Yep, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Again, my name is John Aida, Cassis and Kayer, 18 Russell Park in Quincy. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Hummer Tavern, LLC. With me is Stephen Lehman. Uh, Mr. Lehman is the uh, sole member manager of that limited liability company. He's also the proposed manager, uh, which would be the manager of record on the liquor license. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
um, because I looked at your application. I see you're looking to have a liquor license and you're looking to put together, looks like a plan here for a dining area of a restaurant on the property that used to be the, um, I think it used to be the lobster. Still is. It still is. Yes. Um, how is it that you're coming to us before everything's built? It's kind of like putting the cart before the horse. I understand you, you want to be able to have a liquor license to be able to have a restaurant, but I'm kind of feeling like uh, if it's not built, you know, um, why are we here? Well, it's, it's not unusual to, to do build outs after the fact. Um, it, it's been done before, I think, and I don't know if it's been done before this board. I've certainly done it in different towns and cities. Um, it's just, this is obviously just one step among other steps that they have to do, and they're aware of doing that. Between uh, Mr. Lehman and the owner of the um, building, they've uh, started that process, contacting the different departments and boards. But we're here because Mr. Lehman needs to know whether he is going to invest time, money, and effort um, with the planning, you know, planning, building out, and everything else, um, and, and those efforts before he takes that next step. I think he'll tell you today he'll submit applications to all the boards in the next week or two weeks um, pending what this board decides. And obviously we'd ask, um, and it's up to the board's discretion certainly, but we would request, you know, if you were to approve it, it would obviously be subject to reviews and approvals by all the various boards, which as you know is usually um, part of that process anyhow. It's usually final sign-offs. In this instance, there's a little bit more work involved. Um, they're not looking to carry this out and drag it on, but they, they expect a uh, two- to three-month, hopefully, process to get everything up and up and running. So would your client uh, consider, um, e I'm not sure, I'm not even sure what the board's going to do, but assuming the board were to grant it pending, like, a six-month review, I mean, the one thing I'd hate to see is this board s beginning to earmark, if you will, no, absolutely. Uh, a, a permit saying, okay, here you go, sure. and it never gets built. It sits out there, and then somebody else comes in and says, gee, I want to open up a restaurant, right. and then... We're stuck because we don't have any more licenses to give because, and, and, and here we have a license that hasn't been doing anything. I Absolutely. Just no, I think um, if that was, you know, again, in the board's discretion, if that's what they're leaning towards, they'd be more than um, happy to give you a review certain periods of time where things stand. I think six months is more than fair. It's more than enough, yeah. Um, I mean, I personally, I mean, it, it, my preference is, you know, if you're going to be building a business or a restaurant down in Amara, Great. You know, the more that we can begin to promote down in Hamrock and other business district, that's fabulous. And with an opportunity with having an outdoor, it looks like a deck is what you're proposing. And, um, you know, so you can overlook the water. I mean, you're, you're taking advantage of what you have there, which is a nice ambiance. But I'm like, the only ca caution I have is I hate to give out a permit without seeing it. But I understand where you're coming from. How can I start, if I start building all this and you tell me in six or eight, 12 months we don't have any, then you're going to be like, I'm stuck. I sell Coca-Cola and water, and that's not going to get me anywhere. Uh, you resort to doing the law, what is it called, the uh, lottery, or not the lottery, yeah. the Kino or something. I don't want that either. Right. In terms of the landlord, too, obviously, it's a build-out. It's a completely different concept going in there. So, you know, they don't want to give them the green light until they know that, it, you know, this is, again, the first step in many that they have to do. Um, but I think it's a fair um, perspective that you're, you're giving, and certainly six months, I think, should be more than adequate to be able to do that if that's where the board is leaning. Questions at all from the board? Mr. Harris? Steven, it looks like you're going to lease the premises. Yes. Um, yeah, the lease. This is Fourth Cliff Lobster, right? Well, it's in the same building. Say, as, is, is it in Fourth, the Fourth Cliff doesn't own it anymore. Uh, gentleman Bruce Nolan owns it. <coughs> but there is a lobster company still in there, actively in the back. This will be in the front of the building on Marshfield Ave. It's, um, it's not for sale right now? The building? Yes. Not that I know of. If it's a, I got a, I got a listing of it. It was for sale if we're talking about the same place. And Maybe I just. I don't know. I got a five-year lease with an option for five more, so. And would that, you know, if this. It would carry over, obviously. That was my first concern yeah. when I thought yeah. of it. Um, your renovations, ten to $15,000. Well. It's, it's lobster tanks now, isn't it? No, there's just one concrete pool in there that has to come out, and then I, you know, I had purchased all the, the former equipment that I had at the other. At the other, so right. There's really minimal amounts of money that has to go into it because I already I already own everything else. So. All right. Here's the furniture, the, the, the furniture, equipment, the equipment, and, and things like stuff. that. So. It doesn't go very far. Uh, you no, know. no. <laughs> Six hundred feet down the street. No, <laughs> but ten or fifteen no, thousand dollars yeah, 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 would, yeah. would maybe paint the building. You know. Um, that that's all I have for right now. 
Mr. Vignani. Okay. Are you suggesting that we actually issue the license, or can we just give a sense of the board that when he gets his stuff together, we'll give him the license? Um, you know, I, I'm not wedded to either view. I'm, my, my concern, I understand where he's coming from and saying, you know, well, if I do all of this and build it, and then we end up giving it away to another applicant, then, you know, he's, he's out. Um, so but I also am not necessarily inclined to say, let's just give him a clear license, because I think, you know, ultimately, I don't, I want, I don't want him to hold on to it. Um, I'm not even sure if he can transfer it. You know, he can't sell it, right? So well, it's not we like could. He could sell the business. See, and that's the other thing. I'd, I'd want a condition that he can't sell it, that it has to come, you know, because I don't want, the licenses are for the town, the Board of Selectmen to grant, and I don't want, um, you know, anything like that. To so my question is, what are you suggesting? What, what, <clears throat> are you suggesting give him a license for six months? Is that what you said? Oh, I was asking if that's something oh. that he's looking for. I don't think you can, can do I, that. Can I ask another Correct. question, maybe, of Kim? When we <coughs> issue a license, don't we say, you know, restaurant consisting of 65 seats with an exit here and an exit there. And I'm all for Stephen. Everyone knows, you know, I mean, all for all small business. Can we issue a license right now? I mean, it's not built out. Would the ABCC throw it back at us? You guys have all read them. You've seen the documentation, the detail, the you know, mm -hmm. the, that goes in the motion. You know, and I'm not tr not trying to kill it. I'm just I just don't want it to get. You know, and I know what you're saying. I'd do the same thing you are. I'd test the waters before I made a big investment. But, you know, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if we can, you know, maybe Kim knows more about it. I'm not sure I'd have experienced this exact situation. I don't know if Mr. Maybe I could help. Yeah. yeah. Um, what will happen is if you approve it subject to, you know, this department or all departments signing off, the license actually wouldn't go on the wall until you're satisfied that all the departments have. So that could be three, four, five months out, whatever that time is. So the Board of Selectmen is the final say on the license. What would happen is, subject to the approval, it would, would be sent up to the ABCC. They would review it, and they would look into the financing and the application, make sure everything's in order. Obviously, we, we would be contacted at that time by one of the investigators, and they would probably go down to the site. They, they're aware it's not built out, um, but they would sign off subject to again this board's discretion knowing or you know that you have the final say on like those contingencies being met so we actually would not be issued a li they he would not be issued a license until after abcc approval and signed off and back to your board and at that time you would go through your checklist to make sure everything's been not that I'm, not that that I'm, here's one thing if he doesn't build it and he doesn't use it he comes up for um, what do you call it? Um, renewal. renewal in December, right? They'd be no right. November would be the uh, November. Yeah. So I mean, you're talking about. But what's the uh, seven what's months? the hurdle to remove it? Prior to that time, if if you set a, a certain amount of months and he's not fulfilled his obligations, you may hold a public hearing for status and and go from there. And you can decide at that time whether he's not met his obligations and you can. Revoke it if you so choose, or you can continue it saying, okay, if he says, I just need another month, you can say, okay, we'll continue this public hearing. But you, you, you do have some three parts as far as following it up. But could not, if we were to revoke, and I hate to think gloomy here, well, but I'm just, yeah. right? But if we were to revoke, you could, it could be appealed and still in effect during the whole appeal process, which might be lengthy, right? So my, my feeling to sort of answer Tony's question and you know, I, Steve, I want to help you. I see Michael back there. You know, I've worked with several of you guys in the whole waterways area down there and things. I'm trying to do everything I can to help out that area. I don't know what I'm licensing. And I agree completely that, you know, we need to have things signed off with by the various boards and committees and all that stuff. But we do that anyways, right? And so that's just sort of a, uh, that's the minimum. But I also want to know what the establishment actually really is. And the plans are nice and everything, but you know, these are not binding plans and all that stuff. So I just don't know, I don't, I honestly don't know what I'm licensing. So I'm, I'm fine, to answer your question directed to John, to me, you know, I'd be fine in theory with uh, the entertainment and the common vic to help show the, to help show, you know, <coughs> our intent. But I don't know what I'm licensing in terms of the alcohol right now. I want to make sure it's the right type of establishment well, and all that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm leaning right now towards 
You can make that determination. You could say, you know, following these plans, following what's been presented to you, and. Yeah, but I just personally feel more no, no, comfortable right, doing right. it at that. But you could well, be how, how would this work, that? Attorney Ayeda? What if we were to grant, I'm not saying, but if we were to grant the common victula license you can't, point order, you can't. I mean, if anything, you could probably grant the liquor license. You definitely can't grant the entertainment and the common until it's, vic. Until it's built. Common vic is food stuff. You don't even know this place Oh, that's a good point. Built. Yeah, that's right. I was wrong. Entertainment yep. has yep. to be well, licensed maybe based how about, on. How about this? Okay. Start the build. Uh, start the um, uh, permitting process. Okay. Once you get your building permit um, issued from the building department, then come back to us. In the event that somebody were to apply for uh, a liquor license in the interim, then we would give you notice right away so that you're aware of it, uh, and then address it to see where you are in your progression. Right now, right now, where we're at is um, <coughs> an engineer is going out. And that's the septic. Planning board. Planning board. Her only uh, Laura's only issue was this parking, which is there is nine spaces there, which meets the requirement. And then uh, Jennifer, <coughs> just as far as the septic. So I got the engineers all scheduled, but that was a big thing before I make that big investment of having them go out. If the septic needs to be brought up, and make doing all the alterations and stuff. That's you know. But y your big fear is that we might end up granting the <coughs> liquor license to a third party, right? That's really the kind of biggest concern yeah. you have. Because if, if not, you come back in six months or eight months, whatever it is, when you're just basically all set to say, let's open up. Well, it's still that financial leap in, in you know, that he's going to get all the ducks in a row to know if he's going to make it viable. So, <coughs> I mean, that there's the time and money invested that, you know, the build-out is one thing. We estimated that. But if I have to go into septic and stuff like that, then it takes it from here to here. But that's but I that I understand. But you're going to have to do that. I mean, assuming you wanted to, to assuming you get a license, a liquor license from us, okay, right. you're going to have to do that anyways. Exactly. We don't want to have our liquor license tied into that and then <coughs> tied up indefinitely in the event that there is a third party who comes down in eight or nine months or a year from now and says, "Look, I really want to open up in such and such a space," and we're going to be stuck saying, "Guess what? We can't." And then we'll be like, "But look at the place down in Hamrock; it hasn't even opened yet." See what I'm saying? I know if we're in the quandary of saying we don't necessarily want to give it out prematurely without making sure that you actually are doing what you say you're going to do. Oh, we want to and then be open before summertime. I, I, <laughs> would, I would assume so. so. so th I think that's, that's where, we're, you know, the month thing would be fine. A timeline would be appropriate, I think. You know, something reasonable. Mr. Norton? I, are there any about us? Are there about us? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Have, have they been notified? Yes. They have been, yes. It, the, you get to return mail yep, stuff I and all that. Okay. I don't know. I just did. I wanted to make sure that aspect was covered that's all yeah, it was. Okay. Ms. is there only a certain number of licenses we can give in home rock i think um, in the town isn't it no it's part, it's part of the whole yeah. quarter for so we we time. are there two left there are two right now okay two all i mean i i don't think we should give it to them now but i think we can tell them do your stuff and you're going to get it that's my that's licenses. what we're kind of asking in the contingency <clears throat> kind of way then then they know at least you know, you can still say, hey, you haven't met the three months quota, six months or whatever, then. Well, if, if you get no, I'm with you. within three months. But I, I just want to bring up, I maybe it's a chairman. Yeah. I, I'm not so sure, and I don't have a real problem, but I'm not so sure we can even go that fast saying, if you get this time, we'll do it. Yeah, what, what, if it time up, I, what if it ends up the plan, and I'm not saying this is going to happen, what if it ends up something that's absolutely against everything we stand for? And it's not going to. Right. But. I don't want to make a commitment right. tonight and say we're going to give you a license if it's a. Uh, what? So I would what rather. We, hold on a second. What yeah. do we do with the uh, Orta? Not Orta. Oro. Oro. Didn't he come before us before he finished building it? With a plan. Yeah, but he was. With a plan. He was along. He, he was pretty far, far along. along. Right. He he was, was, oh, I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, so no, that's good. To be consistent we have, we have with never, what we had we done We have before. never given out a license, to my knowledge, in this town, and there may be other towns that that you've uh, appeared before. But my memory, we have never given out a license this early in the game. I just want to be consistent. I know it's, yeah, yeah. We did this with um, an individual a year ago, a little over a year ago. And he had gone through the process. And um, um, so I just want to make sure that we're fair about it and, and reasonable. See, you, could, you could also continue. That's what I was going to suggest. Hearing, which would give um, Mr. Lehman a little bit more security if, yeah. if, if you're asking for specific things from him. There we go. Um, to, the, to get a higher level of confidence, yeah. or if I can put it that way. That's a good point. continue the public hearing. Yeah. And I was going to suggest just that, so rather than deny it, How about if continue. we continue it till like May? That gives you 
March and April, two months. And well, come back the only in thing May. is the process itself, as you know, when it's going to take another four to six weeks up at the ABCC. So, um, wh I guess, what exactly would you, would the board be comfortable with in terms of status-wise? You said um, Oro or the other name. I don't know how far along. What would you? What would be a good time? And what I would be comfortable with. Well, I mean, what you're asking, what I would be comfortable with. <laughs> A set of plans um, you know I don't I don't know what the building looks like from what I re recall it was like Stephen said there's a concrete lobster tank in there that held you know 5,000 gallons or something like that and that's I'd like to see something between here and the time you open somewhere along the way the artist renderings plans you know his business plans you know something along those lines I mean, doesn't it doesn't have I to go through planning board design review and all that sort of stuff. Site plan. Site plan. Site plan. So those, those, are, those are stamped and approved by the town, so that anchors in as to what it's going to actually be. Right. Site right. plan. I think that would be helpful because that's what uh, that's Boro had. Pending site plan approval. Yeah. Um, he thinks reasonably he might have stuff by end of April. I don't know what the, obviously the schedule, you may not even know the schedule of the board. I, I, I'll, um, I'll tell you what, if you end up getting something prepared prior to April, and I'm not sure what our meeting, last meeting in April is. And I'd be happy to say, come to our agenda, the last one. If not, I know we're having the first Tuesday of May, which is the 4th or the, actually it's not, it's probably like this 3rd. May 3rd. We meet, uh, I think the board is meeting on Tuesday, May 3rd. Well, okay. So I'd be happy to say you can be on the agenda at that time. It comes through the chair. So. Move to continue this hearing until... April 19th or a nearby date um, appropriately as decided by the chairman second discussion okay 715 uh, 715 sharp this time okay uh, uh, question in the back please sure 36 seats. Six seats? 36. 36. 36. <laughs> That's a lot of liquor. <laughs> all right. Very good. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you we'll much. see you in, in April. Moving <clears throat> on back to agenda item number um, five. It is um, a discussion vote on special events applications. The very first one is Shore. And with the um, applicants of Shore, come on up. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. Good to see you again. Mike Gull of Versace with the uh, Situate High School Shore Organization. Uh, back <coughs> here again this year for uh, a permit to run the uh, Shore Run this year, May 28th, uh, 2011. So any questions that you might have about the event, I'm here to answer those questions. Uh, that's Saturday the 28th. You're starting at, um, what was it, 9.30? And it looks like you're basically starting at Peggotty Beach, running around uh, Second Cliff, going up First Parish, coming back down Brook Street. Sounds like you've run the right race. back <laughs> to First Cliff and then ending at the <laughs> Peggotty sure Beach. Sure <laughs> Yes, it, that's exactly right. Uh, no major changes to the event this year. Um, we have retitled the event as the Dunkin' Donuts Situate Shore Run at the request of our lead sponsor. Uh, but the race course will be exactly the same. We have some new sponsors in uh, this year, which will be good. And hopefully uh, the runners will respond. It was a tremendous event, uh, according to everyone, last year. And uh, we ended up raising about $15,000 for the high school, uh, which we hope to beat again this year. So you, you, you kind of opened this up. So is this like John Belushi running, you know, with donuts as he's ex going down the line there, you know, from the uh, Olympics? Well, it was interesting. Uh, we hope not. Um, <laughs> last year we worked very hard with our lead sponsor, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, on making sure they were appropriately represented in the race. Uh, we're meeting again with them this year. They've asked to be represented in uh, better ways, I guess is a, a, a good way to say it. And, um, but we won't, I don't think we'll be handing out donuts uh, at every turn of the race. That's okay. Well, for those people who remember the uh, Saturday Night Live skit, but um, move the board thank of select. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Move the board of selectmen vote to grant a special event permit to the 2011 Situate Shore Run on Saturday, May 28th, 2011 from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. and in accordance with all conditions set by town departments. 
Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Patricia. Moving on to the next um, agenda item, or not agenda, Mark. but next uh, event is the uh, Sean Patterson Road Race. Mr. Patterson, if you could come. I know. This, if I'm not mistaken, is, I'm sorry, I'll have you introduce yourselves. Doug Patterson, Brian Danner. Uh, this is the 10th year, I think, is it not, that this is being run? 10th and the last. 10th and the last. Um, and of course, you've done this. <laughs> Thank you. That's all right. How you doing? You're not doing it again? This is it? Really? Well, I hope not, because I'll tell you, it's the only road race in town that goes 10K. Well, it's unfortunate. There, you, there was TKs, there was the Marine, there was uh, another one, too, and you're the other one. So uh, this is the only one that's surviving. So um, looking through, it's been pretty much, you know, you know what you're running. <coughs> Um, and it's a great event. So, um, questions from the board? Motion was given. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a special event permit to the Sean Patterson Memorial Road Race on Sunday, April 17, 2011, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., in accordance with all the conditions set by the town. Second. By town departments. Second, Second by Mr. Harris. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. And, and Mr. Chairman, if I may, considering this is the last year, thank the, 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 the People have put this together for 10 years. It's been a great race, a great <coughs> credit to Sean, a great credit to the town. So thank you. I'd like you. to thank uh, for, uh, the whole town for all their support, my, my family yeah. and friends and everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Doug. Thanks. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the next agenda item, which is the uh, agenda item six, a discussion of the 375th Anniversary Celebration Committee. <coughs> is uh, oh, Mr. Cavell, yeah, thank you. Are. Mr. Litchfield, thank you. Front and center. Just going to uh, ask, where were you? I saw you out in the hallway. If you could just identify yourselves, gentlemen. Um, I'm Ed Covell. I'm Steve Litchfield. And, and I know that you met on Monday uh, to discuss. I wasn't there, but uh, it looks like there's some good headway. There's a logo now that uh, has been um, selected. And briefly, if you want to just quickly tell the board. The um, committee met on Monday for our first official meeting. And um, a number of steps were taken that are moving us in the right direction, one of which is the logo designed by Matt Brown. Um, I believe the selectmen have all seen it, and you're planning to use it on your stationery. And uh, we envision that that logo will be used as a tag on uh, many of the events that are planned for the town of Situate during the course of the next uh, well, at least the remainder of the year, if not the next 12 months. And um, in fact, that may be the only tie to the 375th anniversary that many of these events actually have, that they will just be part of the celebration. Uh, most notably, that includes the American Legion's 4th of July celebration this year, uh, which I'll get to in just a minute. The other thing that happened that uh, is somewhat noteworthy, I guess, is that we have now got um, officers of the committee. I was elected chairman while I was out of the room. No, I was there. Um, and um, the secretary of the committee is uh, Carolyn Durkin. Um, minutes of the meeting will be available shortly. Uh, and we have scheduled another meeting for this coming Monday at 1 o'clock. If you're available, Mr. Dennehy, that would be good. Um, and the only other real thing that I have to report on is the progress of the 4th of July celebration, if I may. And that is that, um, as you know, we are planning a celebration of our maritime heritage and our long association with the Coast Guard. Um, the guest speaker is going to be Captain Bob Whitehouse, who is a situate resident. He is. Uh, the Chief of Planning and Resource Readiness for First District. And um, he also, in that capacity, is in charge of all of the Coast Guard cutters of First District, which fits right into our plan in that we want to have a 110-foot cutter come into the harbor, tie up to Town Pier, and be open for tours for the citizenry. Um, we are working on getting 
a Boston fireboat to escort the cutter in. Cool. And I have a uh, request in for a pair of uh, 105 millimeter howitzers to fire a shore battery salute as the cutter comes through the jetty. Um, Preferably on Cedar Point. Well, we'll put, I'm thinking one on Cedar and one on Sunset, but I'm not sure how well that'll work out. And I have a sneaking suspicion the artillery command might have uh, something to say about where they'll put it. Um, and it will be facing out. <laughs> uh, Don't give one to Norm. We know which way he'll face it. The, um, <laughs> the other big news that we have is that uh, General George W. Casey, Jr., currently Chief of Staff of the Army, has accepted our invitation to be a special guest at the event, wow. as has uh, General Thomas Sellers, uh, commander of land-based forces of the Mass National Guard, um, both of whom were uh, on the last dais year. last year. Yep. And um, we have a commitment from the United States Coast Guard that they will provide us a silent drill team uh, if we can find a means of bringing them from Alexandria, Virginia to Situate and back. And at the moment, it appears likely that Southwest Airlines is going to donate the seats for them to go both ways. And uh, therefore, oh, and the uh, 215th Army Band has been requested as well. They played last year, if you recall. Uh, we've requested a flyover from the Coast Guard, and it looks promising, but I don't have a commitment yet. What? From the Coast Guard? Yes. Didn't realize they had jets. I was going to say, they have helicopters? helicopters. Okay. Just they do wow. have a jet, and they do have uh, C-123s, but uh, more than likely we're talking helicopters. helicopters. Great. Right. That sounds phenomenal. That it's, that's very exciting. I mean, to bring in a 120 or 110-foot cutter uh, into Situate Harbor uh, on the 4th of <coughs> July is exciting and, uh, and obviously having a, the speaker, um, uh, Captain Whitehouse, and um, it's, it's a great follow-up to last year and, of course, having General Casey and, and I forget, General Sellers, Be Sellers you know, um, mm -hmm. equally as important. So. Um, Mark Patterson and I have talked about it and we think the 110 might be the biggest boat to have come into the harbor ever. If anyone uh, is aware of something bigger, we'd like to know about it. Will we be able to use that to go out f to, to do the wreaths, you know, in the, uh, in the early morning, Mr. Murray? Probably you know? not. <laughs> oh, okay. You yeah. got a low tide to contend with in the morning. <laughs> we'll look at the tides high. I was going to say, is the tide low or high? Okay, great. It's high at 2.23 in the afternoon, uh, envisioning the cutter coming in at noontime and leaving at 4. Great. Yeah. Um, many of these things I'm envisioning are still in the wish stage, not committed to, so I will keep you informed as progress is made in okay. getting commitments. Questions from the board? Mr. Yeah, the comments, I'm glad, I'm glad uh, Matt Brown was able to hook up, and it's a beautiful logo that he designed, and he's been able to attend the meetings and yes, work with was, you on stuff. He yeah. chaired the beginning of the meeting until he's uh, got, got a lot replaced. of good ideas. I'm glad you guys are bringing everybody can, on board. Can we get the logo to both the uh, Mariner and to the Boston Globe so that they could publish that? And he's better so okay. Sure. Somehow, if we could, that'd be great. So, yes. folks, I sent Jake Kelly I saw earlier. It'd be great. And also to let them know. I mean, that's quite a quite a feat to have a, a big celebration like that with the Coast Guard Good stuff. coming in. We um, are not asking for a budget. We know better. Um, but <coughs> we um, do have some plans that are going to require some expenditures and. Um, I also have to ensure that, or we have to ensure that we're not doing things that are going to alienate uh, the town merchants uh, whose livelihood depends on access by their customers to their retail shops in uh, Front Street. I will be meeting with the Front Street uh, Merchants Association to verify that. One of the things that um, I would like to be able to propose, and it, I, I assume it takes uh, your authority, and that is uh, that they were, would be having sidewalk sales during the events. Front Street would remain open, but part of, co oh, sorry, let me back up on that one. Um, one of the things I have to do for the government is tell them the venue uh, to which they're coming, and therefore a decision is going to have to be made shortly on where we hold the event. 
The American Legion proposes that we hold the event on Cole Parkway, taking roughly the same amount of space that the KFC Carnival takes during the week that they're there for the day. Uh, although, frankly, in the afternoon it's over, um, so that it's really just the morning. So in other words, the, the, the speech that was last year held at the Common, <coughs> relocate that down towards the um, band shell um, exactly. in that area, as well as the, march, uh, the marching band that's well, the, uh, band, the, the silent drill team silent is. Silent drill team. I, I would like to, if I may, take a minute uh, to just tell you the problem of where we locate them. They're best seen and heard on a wood floor because you hear their uh, heels on the floor. They're okay on hot top. You don't hear them on grass, uh, so you you lose a significant portion of the excitement of watching a silent drill team if you put it on grass. On pavement would be okay, uh, and therefore that's my driving reason for suggesting Cole Parkway would be better than the common. Um, the negative is there's no way we can put bleachers in the Cole Parkway so that whatever crowd assembles is going to be fighting to see over the head of the person in front of them, and I don't see a way around that. Um, if if you do, I'm open to suggestion, obviously, but uh, in some relatively short period of time, we're going to need a decision on where we can hold the event so that I can schedule uh, the military portions that I haven't yet scheduled. I believe that just needs to get routed to <coughs> the town administrator's office, and July 4th is a huge weekend on Cole Parkway. Yes, it is. And we know so. that. You're 44. And there's a lot of, here 44, I don't know. There's a lot of, there'll be a lot of ramifications on that. I mean, it sounds like a great event and all that, but that's. I understand. Yeah. Um, we um, would envision parking at uh, the back lot of the MBTA yep. and getting school buses to bring people to the downtown. Um, that's probably more parking than we need uh, in and of itself although Pier 44 is there, as you mentioned, and that's town-owned. There's a process, just work with the town administrator's office, I believe, and because you've seen all these other ones, they go through and all the departments sign off and comment. I don't think it, we'll, we'll figure that out. For okay. Such yeah. the event for 375th, I think everybody's gonna have to accept a little bit, you know, given the, um, you know, it's for an event celebration, it happens once every 375 years. So mm -hmm. normal week and people right. will probably have to sit back and just kind of say, you know what, hey, Turn. I'm gonna have to forgo and wait 10, 15, a half hour, an hour, just enjoy the time, enjoy what we have celebrating. So, okay. but we'll work through that and I'll be there on Monday. All right, all right. thank you. Uh, unless there are questions, that's all I have to report. Very good. Thank, thank you. you very much, Ed. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Moving on to the next agenda item, uh, agenda item number eight. It's a discussion vote of the MWPAT loan <coughs> transfer, or treasurer collector. Jane, you're back again. Bad penny. <laughs> Did you just say a bad penny? Like a bad penny? That's what I thought you said, okay. Um, this is the MWPAT Mass Water Pollution Abatement Trust borrowing that I've been trying to accomplish for the past couple of years. Um, you should have the paperwork in your folders. It's um, a vote you have to take. It's an interim loan. Um, I had to time it so it's in sync with some monies that I borrowed in a short-term ter bond anticipation note. Um, at some point in the future, when the trust <coughs> does another uh, pool of long-term debt that will be included in it. It's for a minimal amount of interest, which I don't have in front of me. I didn't keep a copy for myself, um, but it's usually minimal, and when it goes into the long-term bond, it's at 2%. Um, this is the one that the town was awarded some ARA funds, so when we do go to do the long-term debt, um, it will be offset by, um, I think it was about $46,000 of forgiveness. Questions from the board? I know you have something to be read, I think. Yeah. What, what are we using the money for, Jane? Um, this is on the Roses Lane sewer oh, right, project. Right. There'll be betterments to support this debt. All right. Come on down. Do you mind? What? Do I have to, can I read it as written or do I have to read the whole thing? I think you have to read the whole thing. Right. Read the whole thing. Everybody lean back. 
Um, I, the clerk of the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Situate, Massachusetts, certify that at a meeting of the board held March 1st, 2011, of which meeting all members of the board were duly notified and at which a quorum was present, the following vote was passed, all of which appears upon the official record of the board in my custody. Do we have to vote this first? Do we have to vote it or no? We'll vote it at the end. Huh? Um, that the town of Situate shall issue a bond or bonds in aggregate principle in the amount not to exceed $530,000 pursuant to chapters 29C and 44 of the general <coughs> laws and votes of the town passed November 13, 2006, Article 4, which authorized a total borrowing of $357,000 and November 2, 2009, Article 4, which authorized a total borrowing of $175,000 for construction of sewers and other water pollution control facilities. That in anticipation of the issuance of the bonds, the treasurer is authorized to issue an interim loan note or notes from the time from time to time in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed three hundred ninety four thousand dollars nine hundred and fifty nine that each board or note shall be issued as a single registered security and sold to the Massachusetts Water Pollution Abatement Trust at a price determined pursuant to the law loan agreement that the treasurer is authorized to determine the date the form the maximum interest rate and the principal maturities of each bond note and to execute a loan agreement with the trust that with respect to the sale of the bonds and notes, such date, form, maturities, and specific interest rate or rates of the bonds and notes to be approved by a majority of the Board of Selectmen and the Treasurer as evidenced by their execution of the bonds and notes. That all action taken to date by the town and its officers or agents to carry out the project and its financing and include the execution of any loan commitment or agreement by the Treasurer are hereby ratified, approved, and confirmed, and that the Treasurer and the appropriate town officials are he each hereby authorized to take any and all actions necessary and convenient to carry out the provisions of the note, including execution and delivery of the loan agreement and the project regulatory agreement relating to the project. I further certify that the votes were taken at a meeting open to the public, that no vote was taken by secret ballot, that a notice stating the place, time, agenda for the meeting, which agenda included the adoption of the above notes, was filed with the town clerk and a copy thereof posted in a manner conspicu conspicuously visible to the public at all hours in or on the municipal building that the office of the town clerk is lo located, at least 48 hours, not including Saturdays and Sundays and legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting, and remain so posted at the time of the meeting that no deliberations or decisions in connection with the sale of the bonds or notes were taken in executive sessions all in accordance with general law chapter 30a sections 18 through 25 as amended second dated, dated march 1st 2011. second seconded by mr murray discussion saying none all in favor aye, aye. aye. It's unanimous Job done. Yeah. jane thank you <clears throat> We're behind. Okay. Who's here for the uh, public hearing on the street layout? Where are they? Um, They're in the hall. In the hall. Um, no. uh, do, do we? I guess we need to bring them in right now, right? We did because the advertised public hearing. All right. Uh, who is it that's. Who are we looking for out there? Can you tell them? All right. All right. Okay, Al, you, why don't you come on up? We're going to, folks, again, we, we're at a hearing. When we have public hearings, we have to hear them at the time, and we're already 20 minutes late on this hearing. We had two hearings tonight. So I apologize for the people who are waiting for the 745 public hearing, street layout, street acceptance committee. Mr. Banger. Yes. So Thank we're you, jumping Mr. to Chairman. agenda item number 10. Um, what do we need to do in order to move this forward? We voted on this last week to some degree, but this is the official capacity, I think, of This is where you ask uh, if anybody has a, you're, you're holding a public hearing, so you're looking for the recommendation from the Street Acceptance Committee, the Planning Board, and any public comment that, that there might be. Okay. So I would suggest that you go first to and then make a motion if you agree uh, that this should move forward. Uh, 75% of the abutters along these streets have petitioned. A cost survey was done to estimate the cost to bring it up to street standards. 75% of the abutters, uh, property owners along the street then subsequently agreed uh, to that cost assessment, which would be assessed as a betterment upon completion of the work. 
the cost would be spread among the, re the property owners on the street based upon the ex actual cost, uh, not to exceed a certain amount for each street. So there are four streets, Cornerstone, Blossom Street, Pine View Drive, and Pine View Circle. And uh, they've been through the um, street acceptance. They've been to the um, uh, planning board. It's been uh, approved by both boards. Uh, they've been before us last week, I think it was, and now this is an opportunity for anybody who would like to speak out against it. This is their hearing. So is there anybody here who would like to speak about any of these th four streets? All right. So there's no, um, nobody's discussion either way. All right. So at this point, then, we can accept a motion. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to order the layout of Cornerstone Lane as a public way, sedway bound and described in accordance with the description and plan to be filed in the office of the town clerk at least 10 days prior to the annual town meeting. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Further discussion by the board or the audience? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Move the Unanimous. Board of Selectmen vote to order the layout of Blossom Street as a public way, sedway bounded and described in accordance with the description and plan to be filed in the office of the town clerk at least 10 days prior to the annual town meeting. Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Discussion from the board or audience? Say none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Third motion. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to order the layout of Pine View Drive and Pine View Circle as public ways. Said ways bounded and described in accordance with the description of the plan to be filed in the office of the town the clerk, town clerk at least 10 days prior to the annual me town meeting. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. That Thank takes you. care of that item. Thank you, Mr. Banger. Now, let's move back to discussion or item, agenda item number nine. It's a discussion vote of the fiscal year 2012 budget and articles, which is being continued. Uh, in particular, we're going to move to article 22, which is the general bylaws of delinquent licenses and fees. Um, Jane here, I think that was Jane, right? Jane, your suggestion here is to. Um, <coughs> In essence, allow the board That's the opportunity that if in the event that somebody has failed to pay their license or fees, um, the board can act on it. And this is authorizing the board to be able to act on it without having to wait a full year. Right. This is an issue, um, well, I've been trying to accomplish it for the, over the four years that I've been here um, because there are two different types of bylaws. One is the um, bylaw we already have in place, but people have to be at least 12 months past due for um, the town to be able to um, deny them a permit or a license if they owe any fees to the town. Um, this other one is uh, in the community where I worked before that I worked with town council and, and I was very aggressive at his um, uh, orders, I guess, um, to enforce it. If anybody is late, there was a good standing approval process in place, and I had to sign off on applications and such um, to make sure people were in good standing with their monies that they owe to the town. Um, I did receive a phone call from Jim Toomey um, about how the town has to, uh, what the town has to do exactly um, to be able to have this in place. As you know, back in December, we had some issues with some parties that were very delinquent, but yet not quite 12 months. This is a collection tool. Um, and at that time, we spoke to an attorney at the Department of Revenue, um, and he also spoke to Kathleen Caleri, who is the head of the legal department for the Division of Local Ser Services and the DOR, and she recommended that we adopt this um, new section. So um, Jim was trying to get in touch with the DOR to see how exactly it has to be implemented, whether or not it's additional bylaw. I didn't hear back from him again today. I provided some additional information to him. Um, and I wasn't here when you discussed it last week, I guess it was. So right. I didn't know if anyone had some questions for me. I can see the benefit, for example, if somebody decides um, they're delinquent and they get their liquor license, for an example, um, they could be, in essence, delinquent for 21 months without paying before we could actually act on it. In other words, they could not pay their license, in essence, mm -hmm. well, not 21 months, it would be 12 months, but still they could string it out over that period of time. Right. In this way, it just gives us the ability to make sure that people pay sooner. But I think the question that was ra raised by the board last week was, at what point should the board act? If they're delinquent one month, two months, three months, to what degree 
should we then act on it? Well, I think that's the, that's the quandary the board had. Okay. Well, from my perspective, because I did use it for over six years where I was before, is um, people upon their application had to bring it to the treasurer collector's office and my staff or I would sign off on it so we would check the record. So if you're a day late and a dollar short, um, you don't get a signature and, and you pay it and then you get what you have applied for. Um, this is not um, a huge amount of the population. It's a non-issue for most people. And it is a collection tool. So in those situations, um, the intent is to get people to pay their taxes. They're using town services and such. And um, I think um, it would be very helpful to me. I don't think it would discourage anyone from applying for a permit or a license that was brought up when I brought it um, to the attention of the administration previously when I first came here because I wanted to be able to use that because I know it's effective. Um, I provided Tricia with some samples. I don't know if you had it in your packets of a, um, uh, an application from the building department and um, another application, but it, it is very effective. So I would encourage you to support it. Um, and again, I'm waiting to hear back from Jim Toomey. I don't know if Tricia's heard back from him today about exactly what um, the DOR said that we have to do. Questions from the board? Just still, what, what does delinquent mean? Well, how many? Dollar shot. So, so if on your tax bill it says due May first, mm -hmm. and May you apply on May second, and your tax is unpaid, uh -huh. it can be denied. Um, since I'm the town treasurer collector, I do have the legal authority to enter into payment plans with people if I needed to. But for most people, it really is not an issue. Um, it's just for those two that. So each bill is separate. The liquor license is separate. The tax, real estate tax, is a different term. Seven any, days any fees yeah. owed to the town whatsoever in my Whatever's office. printed on the bill. Yeah, everything. We collect um, details occasionally. There's issues with people not paying, surprisingly, police details. Um, the school details, there's septage, there's um, things at the Harbor Master's office. There's quite a bit that we collect through my office. And we do have the records there, so it certainly makes sense to have the Treasurer Collector's office um, sign off on it um, if somebody's passed due. So, well, Mr. Norton, what, what, what's the point? If I may, <coughs> me, was the point uh, clarified? Is are we putting a limit on this at all, or a time period, or is it from day one? Day one, I would absolutely recommend. It is a collection tool, so. Um, if you're behind I, in anything, then uh, I had to say usually it's a collection tool. But I, I'm thinking in terms of uh, instead of businesses, that's homeowners uh, who don't come under this. Uh, what we're doing here tonight, but uh, well, they do actually. Um, all right, they do. You know, building it's, permit. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, I, you know, sometimes people have legitimate reasons for being a day late, a two days late. Right. Uh, can they apply for an abatement? Uh, yeah, if they're a day late. I mean, I think if everyone in town uh, was penalized because they were a day late on whatever bill they have, and they had the fear of someone coming down and shutting off their telephone for a day late, or shutting off their gas for a day late, uh, it's pretty hard. It's pretty strict. I think, I think you have to have a little flexibility here. There's no flexibility. If, and I'm not saying Jane and her kindness would ever go out and, you know, take, try to take someone's uh, business well, away for, for 24 hours, but the fact of the matter is she's allowed to if we, if we don't put a timetable on this. Well, and, and again, I come from a background that it was used um, as a collection tool. I think you need to put it in perspective that, first of all, um, the budgets are based on monies being collected. Mm -hmm. um, the expectation of local receipts, taxes being um, collected. Um, if people are paying a penalty, it's because they didn't pay on time. That's my statutory obligation, is I have to collect things with interest. I don't have a choice about that. Um, this is a very small percent of the population. I think, you know, again, for most people, it's not a problem. 
Um, but for those, there were um, incidents where there were several thousand dollars past due back in December. And um, for people that are going before boards and, and wanting meetings and using town services and such when they haven't paid their fair share in a timely manner, um, and my experience has been that when people are told, you know, gee, you know, you were supposed to pay whatever, they pay it right away. It's not a problem. Um, and that's uh, over 10 years of being a treasurer collector. Um, I mean, I certainly have the flexibility, again, in my statutory authority as a town treasurer collector to enter into a payment plan um, with somebody if um, it, it's usually for developers. They I, I, I'm not against the, the, the whole the concept at all. Yeah. I just, I, I guess I have a little bit of a problem saying, you know, coming down on the person after 24 hours uh, uh, in arrears and saying we're going to take your common VIC licenses. Or no, no, that's not well, it at all. It's, it. no. that, that, that's not it at all. What would happen is somebody would go um, get an application from the building department, let's say, mm -hmm. to put an addition on the house. So they had to, on that day, bring it over to the treasurer collector's office. Um, there's already um, a section in Neil's um, building software where Julie or I can sign off on it. Um, but what they would do is we'd have to sign. If their taxes were up to date, their excise or whatever, then we could sign it off. It's not a problem. Um, if they're past due, then they can rectify that by paying it, which they're supposed to be doing. If there's an issue when they can't pay, then they certainly can talk to me and make <coughs> payment arrangements. Bless, Bless you. Bless you. It doesn't mean, um, I mean, the selectmen have the authority to revoke a license or permit for being 12 months plus yep. past due anyway. So, um, I, again, you know, you need to put it in perspective that it's really not the norm for people. It's a small percentage of people. Um, and I, I, I fully agree, and I will vote for it. I just want to be careful that we don't become uh, like the the overzealous bill collector. That's all. Well, I resent that. Um, no, uh, no, no. You shouldn't. No, I said I said we. Yes. Okay, and if, uh, I mean when I we say we, I mean the town of Situate or the town, whatever it might be, not Jay Lapato. No, anyway. I am, you know, believe me, I could, I have met with hundreds and hundreds of people in my four plus years here, but um, this is not, I, it's not to be viewed as a negative bylaw. Not, it's I am really not a suggesting tool, that. And I have met so with tons of people in my 30 years here. I know, and, and well, I'm past just, two I, taxes. And I'm just saying, you know, let's not, right. and I'm going to vote for it. So motion. I mean, so make a motion. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to support Article 22? Second. Second by Mr. Murray. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you, Jane. All right, moving on to the uh, next article, which is Article 6, Contingent Appropriations for Fiscal Year 2012 and um, Operating Budget. What everybody's been waiting for. <laughs> a discussion on, further discussion on our discussion from last week on the override. This week, today, we're going to be making a decision on what exactly that amount is. Um, so um, open it up to discussion. Obviously, we have needs for the school department and then we have needs for the town's departments. And um, Mr. Norton. I guess to start it off, I, uh, uh, I think we all agree what you said there were needs for the, for the school department, uh, certainly, and there were certainly needs for the town side. I think our job tonight is to try to, try to come up with a number that, uh, that will hopefully somewhat satisfy both the town side and the school side. Uh, the number that would completely satisfy uh, both sides of, of government, if I can put it that way, uh, is probably a number that, that wouldn't pass an override. It would just be too high because the, uh, the town and the school in all likelihood will need a lot more money than we're going to put forward tonight uh, over the next years. Uh, but we have to weigh that with the, w w with the thought of what number will pass or what number will not pass. If we put forward a number tonight that is unrealistic, uh, it might please somebody who, some people who uh, 
think the higher the number is, the better it is for everybody. But if it fails, it's not good for anybody. So, so we have to. That's our chore, I guess, if that's the right word. Try to reach that that number, whatever it might be, uh, that will somewhat satisfy the needs of uh, both sides of the government. That's all my statement. Gentlemen, Mr. Murray. Yeah, when we look at the abundance of paper and electronic files, spreadsheets, and so on that have been provided, and I really do want to thank the school committee for their presentation over the last months, in addition to the, the town, the staff, and Tricia. Um, you know, the school over the next three years, I think, has come up with a very defensible and understandable uh, target value of about $1.8 million for the three years. And um, what that did not include, because the values, the figures weren't available, was the fact that there's going to be coming online a, a significant amount of revenue in the context of the solar array and the um, Brain spasm. Wind. Thank you. Wind turbine. Um, and Al, thank you as head of DPW for providing these, these spreadsheets to us. And we understand that these are not built yet, but things have been signed. And, and this is the best estimate we have of the pro forma moving forward on these. But for example, in fiscal year 2012, the solar array is going to contribute a savings of approximately $153,000. And if you take the two-thirds, one-third split of that, that comes to 102000 for the schools. And the same sort of calculation for the wind turbine comes up with, in just the first year, a savings of 167000 Two-thirds of that's approximately one twelve. And you can do that for the next several years. I think that... Um, that moves forward <coughs> into a range of about, and again, the schools didn't have the, those figures available at the time. I think the schools can achieve their 1.8 with a, for the next three years, with a reality of about 1.5 or so on that. And then I think also Tricia and her team have put together a very realistic and um, approachable plan for very real town needs, and it includes. Uh, the single largest value on there is for roads, and we already talked about roads and seawalls, and Mr. Bangert raised a point earlier today in the context of the capital plan about because this is being added to the general levy, that this would be um, um, funding in the continuing years as well, and I, for one, am willing to, to commit to, just like we did with water, to continuing to enhance the infrastructure for the roads and sea walls and so on um, continuing forward. And when you put all that together, um, you know, to cut to the chase, that comes up to approximately 735,000 or 750,000 or so. So you put this all together, and I think a, an approachable figure that I'm very comfortable with is a total override of 2.2 million. And when you back out on the estimates of the average home tax bill and so on and so forth, the 2.2 million comes down to $278 total per year, which is, and I'm just reading my writing, I can't read the decimal place, but it's about, you got to calculate, it's about $23 and $23 a month. So when you look at what I see as very measured and thoughtful plans put forth by the town addressing their very real needs um, and the schools addressing their very real needs, um, I think it's a, a uh, reasonable contribution to contribute to the enhancement of the schools, which helps the town overall and the enhancement of the town, which helps the school, contributes to the fact that we are all, in fact, one town, and that 2.2 
comes out to $23 a month, and I think it is the direction that we should seriously go on this. Discussion? Further discussion? Mr. Vignani? Yep. Uh, just to reiterate or to add to uh, some of Rick's comments, um, per the discussions last week, you know, in my opinion, this is being driven by two things the school's inability to maintain the services and the capital needs of the town. Um, part of the discussions earlier on the capital plan were seawalls and roads, and um, although we did put it in the capital plan right now, I think that that has to be um, reinforced in the town side of this override, that um, a large chunk of that money has got to go into that infrastructure every year, year in and year out, based on the needs, whether it's seawalls one year, roads the next year, or um, some other infrastructure issue in the, in the outcoming years, and this will give us the means to do it. Um, a couple things um, on this $1.8 million need of the school in year three, and almost that in year two, is um, a couple of assumptions that have to be made. I mean, um, we're getting to that number by saying, okay, you'll get about $1.5 million from an override. There's about $300,000 in green stuff if we do this two-thirds, one-third split which I think we're agreeing to here, um, that'll get you your 1.8. But a lot of these other balls have to fall in place. This assumes a, a contract at, at zero cost of living increase. It assumes, um, um, actually it does have in here that water and sewer will not be included and does not need to be included um, for those years. Um, and it, uh, um, it includes a, you know, a minimal increase in revenue of about 1.5% every year. But a lot of things do have to fall in place here. One thing that we did do tonight is we passed a large capital plan, which is going to have a big impact of several hundred thousand dollars on this number. So the 1.8 need is going to be at least, or uh, up to $474,000 times 0.6667, at least $316,000 that, that the school will be short in year three. Um, my goal in doing this is to put forward a plan that's actually going to work. It's silly for us to put an override together if in year two we have to lay off more teachers to maintain the level. In year three we have to lay off more teachers to maintain a level. Um, so as Joe mentioned though, we've got to put forward a number that is actually going to pass. So that's the balancing act here. Um, and I'm not convinced now that 1.8 is actually going to work for the schools um, with that capital plan. So I don't know how we're going to get around with that. Obviously, a few things could move in a, in a positive way, but that's probably less likely than the opposite. Um, that's my big concern right now with this. And my other concern is if the town's going to get $700,000 that we actually earmark $500,000 of that to go to infrastructure needs on an annual basis, um, because I don't know that a capital plan will be able to um, increase every year um, without ending up costing the town fire, police, and, teach and teachers. So those are, are my concerns. I, I think, uh, and I think those are probably the concerns of everybody, and I guess that's what I tried to, to, to refer to in the beginning. It's just, you know, the, it's not the, the absolute perfect plan. This, you know, we don't, because we can't see what's going to happen two or three years from now. There may be more revenues, there may be less revenues, uh, you know, to cover these obvious problems that the borrowing is going to cause. We do have an agenda item later on on the uh, evening on the legacy funds. Uh, I think that's an opportunity for, for the board to, to uh, if the board feels that way, to, to uh, supplement the school, uh, the school budget. Uh, I think the, again, these numbers are not absolute from the green, from the energy, from the windmill, and for the solar panels. I think Tony mentioned 300. I think if you take Al's estimates, uh, and again, it's estimates, we feel, feel pretty solid with them. They come closer to 500, I think, so. Each one is about three. So it's about 500. 500 for the, the school them. side, I'm yeah. talking. Yeah, give yeah, or the take, two again, it's not. Both of them, 500 right. total. 500 total, you're right. So there's At 500 least. more, hopefully, that the school would would uh, uh, get down the road. Again, it's not the 
not going to solve every problem in the school by any means, nor every problem in the town. But again, we, as Tony said, we have to weigh it and what will what will fly. Sean, just a couple of questions. Um, I had said it last week. Just a couple of two things I said: make it not too rich, but make it so it will fill the needs for the school for the next few years. I asked Jamie or Bill or anyone from the school committee if I thought 1.8 would satisfy the needs for the school for the next three years, but now what you're saying in year three it might not. And I'd just like to hear, you know, their response if, you know, if well, I, I wouldn't want to be here in, in three years and, and, and be faced, you know, have you guys faced with shortfall. Okay, great. Um, good to see you guys. Thanks for debating this. The reality is when we put the 1.8 together, the thought was it's a plan that we feel we can live within not to go, you know, it gets us three years, by then we're hoping things are picking up, things are better. We didn't take into account, you're correct, the, the uh, green funds that might come, but at the other token, we also didn't take into account the cost of the capital thing. We kind of assumed that at some point they'll wash out each other. Um, while we would love to ask for more, the reality is we put together a plan that enables us to right. maintain services, restore some of the things that we've lost, and invest in some of the curriculum, and also compensate for the loss in some federal funding that will be gone starting next year. Some went this year. That's kind of a wash with what we kept. So in our mind, trying to be conservative and trying to also be sensitive to the, the taxpayers and the needs of the town, we feel that the 1.8, you know, we're going to do our best to live within it, and we feel that we can do three years uh, without hurting our services with that. Would we love more? Absolutely, but we're also trying to be realistic. Make it pass. And just if, if Jamie something, just one other comment. Rick and um, Tony figured $23 per month, so the average house would be... Yep, that was, that's based on the spreadsheet from Trisha oh. and Jane's office right here, the one that's got the... 275 or so. Override figures on the left, the big long one, and it says $2.2 million override on a single family average tax bill, it would be an increase of $278 per year. Divide that by 12 and you get $23.17. Just so, I mean, that's what the public's really gonna. If I may though, we're, we're talking about the school at 1.8 would make that actually 2.5, not 2.2, so that would be a different number. What? If we're assuming that the energy savings and the override, I mean the capital thing are gonna wash that. So I mean, that's just, our position is the 1.8. It's not really 1.8 if you take it down to 1.5 and assume we're going to get money from them because we're going to get hit with 300 from the capital plan. So the reality is it needs to be 1.8. That and the capital plan will wash. That'll get us to where we need to be, which takes that number to 2.5. No. That's not what's been proposed, but it's not what he's I'm right. No, you're going to be on the numbers. But, yeah, I'm not, I'm not proposing that. I understand that. I'm just, you asked me what we need. Yeah. I'm telling you, we've done our best right. to come up with what doesn't impact, and if we want to not cut and protect services, we can't assume that that money, which was your understanding that that money was going to get us to 1.5, leaving out the point of Tony's point that the 300 was going to come back, that money then goes right. away, it doesn't matter. Right, but that goes to my earlier comment earlier this evening about the capital plan side of things, that I'm confident that we have safeguards in place such that that impact on the capital plan, if it's at that scale and it hasn't been mitigated by further, then we have safeguards in place two years out to address that so the town and the schools aren't negatively impacted by that increase in the uh, debt service. And that's where you also get into the fact that, you know, 1.8 minus, 1.8 to 1.5 is only 300,000, whereas the green is adding about 600,000. So you're coming up ahead on that. The green is 500 total, of which the school will get two thirds and the town will get a third. So that's about 100. No, the, oh. the, I took, I just took the spreadsheet emailed to us today. <coughs> that value there, which is the total savings, right? This is just the solar, right? I took two thirds of that in that year. So that sum is from the solar only they need it. They need it every year. Correct. We can't add, it's not increment savings, it's savings. You don't get the 150 plus 165. The 150 goes to 165. Right, right, right. So 
I mean, you all have to vote on what you have to vote on. The, the bottom line is we went through a budget that we thought we don't have to come back for three years. We know there are some tough assumptions there, including the fact that we're not accounting for any cost of living increase for our, our bargaining units. We're, we're going to go and live with what we have to live with. So, you know, we're, we're coming with a realistic number. You need to make 1.5, you need sure. to make 1.5. I have an obligation to the schools to say right. the number that best we can do, we feel, is 1.8. Right. No, I, I, I completely see where you're coming from, Jamie, obviously. And I, I also <coughs> thank Tony and you for bringing up the fact that this is budgeted on 0% on the, on the contracts, which is a completely separate issue. But one of the good things that that also does is because, you know, we, we really appreciate you and you know, going that way and, and uh, you know, um, and that, but that also means that the, the tired argument about, oh, all, all we're doing with an override is just funding, you know, union increases doesn't wash in this case because that's a zero percent on that. There's a step as well, but, you know, the, the, the main bottom line on that, the intent here is to, um, you know, have it go for uh, all the other things that you've, you've adequately defended here. And uh, so... You know, I mean, Tony raises the issue of the of the debt service, which I think is a legitimate issue, but I think we're going to be able to handle that. So that's why I, at least, am saying that the um, that the uh, green pretty much offsets from the 1.5 up to the 1.8. If I just may, uh, I guess that's what I this is what I meant when in my opening statement that. We played the numbers at least individually, and, and, and this is a number I think will fly with the public. If you boost it up another three hundred thousand dollars, or another four hundred, bring it up to two point six in that area, you put it into a whole different category on how much people are going to have to pay. That two hundred and seventy dollar average home, whatever it was for a year, goes up to over three hundred dollars for that average home. And that's where I start saying, you know, 270 uh, a year might fly, 300 won't. That's the decision I make. You know, am I right? Who knows? Am I wrong? Who knows? But that's that's what comes into the yeah. my thinking process anyway. I, I might as well share mine. Um, I think everybody's being very hopeful. Um, my fear is is that the number's too high, um, but I'm willing to go along because I think it's important that we have a unanimous board on this as well as the, board, uh, the school committee and as well as the advisory. Um, my f feeling is that I, I, I tend to think we need to have a lower number because we need to make sure and ensure that this override succeeds. Um, I'm fearful that it may be too high and it will fail, which puts us into a different situation. But having said that, um, I'm fully supportive of the $2.2 uh, million dollar override. Um, obviously, the town as a whole needs needs, and one thing that you've harked in on, which I, I, I'll spell it out again, I said it last week, and I think some people misconstrued it, is that the school unions are getting zero, getting zero, and this is what I was referencing in the past. These budgets are not premised on school union contracts. It's premised on a zero going forward, which means that the town needs to fund these for the school and for the, um, um, for, for the town as a whole. Uh, in conjunction with that, though, the town also has needs that the town has to address. And so um, as a board and our fiduciary duty, we have to address that collectively for all departments. And um, so I think it's imperative that we support it wholeheartedly and going forward. We're trying to tell this to the town that this is why you need to support it. I, I realize you've broken it down. Um, one thing to bear in mind, I know I've spoken with my case about this, is that in addition to um, this increase, there's also you know, you're going to have potentially an additional up to 2.5% tax rise. So it's not just the 278. There's the potential that there could be more. So people have to be aware of that, you know, that their taxes could increase next year in addition to this amount. But it's necessary because of the costs associated with services that this town has. I mean, it's cut services and everybody's willing to do it, but then they're the first ones to complain that they can't get down their road, the road's not graded, the fire and police are late, the school buses they have to pay for, the athletic fees, um, the fact that the beaches aren't raked, um, the fact that, you know, the street cleaner hasn't <coughs> gone down, or the fact that the transfer station isn't open in the middle of a snowstorm. I mean, this is what we run up against. These are the services, and it's the quality of life that you pay for. And these are bare-bone facts. So I think everybody clearly here agrees, most people agree, 
think there are a few people who disagree, but I mean, this is necessary. So, we as a board, along with the school committee, are saying to the people of the town, vote it. We had a town meeting, there's gonna be a discussion there, and if it passes town meeting, it's going to the ballot. And if people choose not to do it, then accept it. But the reality is, things are not going to be as nice as they are. And they're actually probably deteriorating. So, we, in my four years on this board, have not elected to do an override. We've come to the conclusion it's necessary, absolutely necessary. We've heard the school committee. The school committee has told us it's absolutely necessary, otherwise the quality of education is sliding back. And, you know, we're hearing that. And, you know, hopefully it resonates with most people and most people in the town to understand that we're not just pulling numbers out of thin air. We're taking hard numbers. Uh, you heard Mr. Stubino, and I'm sure the school committee wishes it was a larger number. But we're picking a number that we think is the appropriate number that we feel the town needs. And many people might not like it, but we're asking you to support it, look it over. Um, so um, I think it's, it's very important to understand that. Mr. Uh, just, just a comment, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want to put this on, on the record that when we talk about a zero for the, the teachers of the first year or a zero for the town, I mean, the, the negotiation, negotiating process, the collective bargaining process, you know, you cannot go in with a preconceived, <laughs> we're going to give zero. I mean, we don't know what the result's going to be. I want to make that perfectly clear. We are certainly hoping that, that we'll, both the school side and the town side, uh, will, will uh, come out with numbers that are, make this all work, but we certainly are not, uh, nor do we intend to give the impression that uh, we're going in there with any preconce preconceived notions on collective bargaining. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Vignani. Yeah, just uh, one uh, quick question about the board's feeling. Um, the town is going to get 700 and something thousand dollars of this. Are we in agreement that we want that, you know, a large sum of that, something around $500,000 allocated to capital improvements? I would say five with me if you know if you will. And I'm and I and I go further. Whether it's five, to be honest with you, whether it's 500 or 400, I think we need to, you know, nail that down. Um, but absolutely, and I want to go even further than just saying capital improvements because that might mean one thing to one person and one thing to another. But I want that. My intent is to have that be extremely visible capital improvements, such as roads, seawalls other things like that that are tangible people can see exactly where their money is going and you drive around our roads they get flooded they get snowed they get everything on them and uh, you know they need it and so that's my my intent absolutely okay. so the other increases there deal with a couple of police officers mm -hmm. um, a couple of FTEs moving them from point eights to point to ones um, and some overtime that needs to be restored to the, mm -hmm. the fire department that got cut. And the rest of it will go to seawalls, so you don't think I was opposed to that in the capital plan, um, <laughs> and, uh, and roads. Um, again, I reiterate my concern that we have to put a plan out there that, that fixes the problem of the schools, and I'm not convinced that this number does it. Um, you know, I, I think that it's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars short, and I think in years two and three, there's going to be some layoffs. Um, but I am in tune to the fact that there is a number that if you go above it, you're going to get zero. So um, I guess we have to make the decision whether tw two layoffs is better than 20 layoffs. Um, but that is my concern. In order to hit this 1.8, a lot of things have to fall in place on the positive and we already have one, the capital plan, that already went against it. Yeah, I think that's a, a good point, but just so people, I mean, we have these spreadsheets and they're available to the general public, of course, but we're looking at them right now. Just so you know what the difference is, I mean, Mr. Danny, he said that his personal preference in the ideal world would be for a, a smaller amount. And if you go from 2.2 down to 2 million, which lowers the impact to $253 a year, but what that does is that would impact the schools even, you know, more negatively, bringing them down to 1.3, which, you know, exacerbates the problem that we all realize is there. But on the other hand, if you just go up only 200,000 above a 2.2 to a 2.4, 
then as Mr. Norton articulated, you get up into a $302 increase on the average on the average home, which I think is just, you know, unpalatable. And it would add to the, just to address your point, Tony, the um, school side, it would add, you know, a, a hundred and hundred and hundred and thirty thousand dollars, which is real money, I admit. But I think that increase of two hundred thousand dollars, while it would be <laughs> better for the schools and better for the town side, I think that's going to have a disproportionately large negative impact on the chances of the thing passing, which is what we all want. And so while I, you know, Tony knows far more about the ins and outs of the budget and the process than do I, um, I'm confident that just as the school has made excellent progress on continuing efficiencies and just as the town has made excellent progress on identifying and continuing efficiencies, those efficiencies uh, in combination with some of the fail-safe mechanisms we were talking about with Ms. Lopardo earlier on, that in two years, should your view be accurate, which it might not be, um, then we'll be able to deal with it. So I, I think this is a good middle of the road. It's a, uh, you know, in some ways, some might see it as a compromise, and I guess maybe the, how do you identify a good compromise? It ticks everybody off. But on the other hand, I think there's a, there's a lot here for everybody to, to wrap their hands around and, and push for. It, just to your point, Rick, you know, the reason why I was ar arguing or articulating a lower number is that because of the deficit for the school for this year is a million. And obviously, if we do a 1.8, there's an excess of 800,000 for year one, an excess of 300,000 for year two, and then obviously year three, there, there, there's, there's no excess. My feeling was to do a lower number this year only for the sake of saying, okay, we work within a smaller number, make sure that it ensures that it passes, yeah. and then we get to year two, which is next year, which means that, yes, there will be a deficit. If, if there's a million dollars to the school this year, they're going to have a deficit of 500,000. Yeah, we could take a big picture plan and say, let's do an override that's going to cure the, and be a remedy for the next three years. I'm just afraid it's going to, it may not pass. I'd rather look at the one year and kind of look at it in years as we go and try to see if maybe local revenue increases, whether we get more state aid, probably not, whether the federal government's going to be doing anything that could help the schools out, probably not. But um, I'd be willing to bet in two years when it's an election year for the House of Representatives <coughs> both in the state and also down in Washington, D.C., we're going to find some revenue coming to the schools because they all want to be reelected. So I'd be willing to bet in three yeah. years we're going to find some more money out there all of a sudden miraculously coming. But I'm looking at it from a conservative, a fiscal standpoint of saying let's take a little bit, take one year at a time. You know, I res you know we all look at it differently. Maybe the panacea is the three-year fix, do the override for 1.8 plus the town. I just think, from my standpoint, looking at this year, if there's a way to get through this fiscal crisis that we have, that's how I'm looking at it. That's the reason why I'm looking at a smaller number for an override. However, I realize I'm, I'm in the minority on that, and I do not want to create a situation for people here and in the audience and everywhere else to understand that I'm against it. I'm not, because it's necessary. We need to address these, these, these um, um, shortfalls across the town departments. And so I'm fully supporting the 2.2 override. I'm just, that's the reason why I'm saying I was looking at a smaller number for this year. Um, would that mean that we'd have to come back next year? Maybe it would. But at least I'm saying to everybody, look, I'm fixing this year. We'll deal with next year if there's more revenue. If it means another shortfall, we need to address it. So that, that's the only reason why I was saying it to people. Yeah, and I didn't, mean, little, I, and yeah, I didn't mean to disagree I, with you. Sure. Just a little yeah. bit longer than we have to say. I, can I just want yeah, to yeah, I didn't yeah, mean to yeah, disagree yeah, with you, and I, and no, I, I understand what you're talking myself. about. That's all. Absolutely. Yeah, I was so just trying to show what the here. impact is of these of these differences in values. So I, I, I understand your point, John. Uh, in order to, 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 to move it along and certainly not trying to stifle any discussion, we certainly had a lot of it, let me put forward a motion that the board uh, – is there any particular language? I don't know. Uh, Joe, uh, if, I, if I may, yep. I have the language in front of me provided. Go, be my guest. Is that okay, Mr. Chair and Joe? Is that okay? Go ahead. Sure. Okay, so this would be uh, move Article 6, which is titled Contingent Appropriation Fiscal Year 2012 Operating Budget, worded as follows, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from, a variable f from available funds the amount of $2.2 million or a greater or lesser sum for the purpose of additionally funding school and departmental operating purposes and other expenses in fiscal year 2012 
with said funds to be contingent upon passage of a Proposition 2.5 referendum question under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 21C, or take any other action relative thereto. Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Norton for the discussion. Just one question. Do we have to add capital? It says you read the budgets. Do we have to add capital department operating budgets? Um, it depends on what question you vote. So you might have to go back. Once you vote the ballot question, it has to not be exact but symbiotic with the article. So right now it's okay depending on which ballot question you ask. Just so people in the audience know what's going on, we also have a separate ballot question because we are also tonight wording ballot questions. And because this is a two-part process, we need to agree on the wording of the ballot question as well, which would be the next part of this. So the answer to your question is maybe. Why don't you just add or capital yeah. projects? You know, amend it to yeah. include capital projects? Okay, that's fine. Okay. So I amend that. Yep. Okay. So the line. I second the amendment. All right. For the discussion? <laughs> the gentleman in the back and then the lady in the front and then the gentleman on the side. Tom McCusker, 50 grand Mr. McCusker. Thank you. At 278, what is that based on? What's the average? That's based on $500,000 home, $500, $500, $500, home with a tax rate of $5,482. Correct. Oh. Thank you. Ms. Curran. I'm Mark Curran, Chris Parish Road constituent. Um, in order to protect the future um, uh, allocation of the fund, does the wording need to be more specific to indicate um, whatever you agreed on, whether it was 1.5 to go to the school side? The 700 to go to the town side. I believe I'm it. Concerned that it's too general. I believe it's the intent, and certainly the the the, the intent to do this on the one third two thirds split. So that comes out to that 2.2 million on the one third two thirds split, and comes out to 1.466740 for the school, and 733,260 for the town. I read what was in front of me, personally. I'm comfortable with the minutes reflecting that that what it's going to because that's the split and that's where we're going. But I don't have an anchor on this one one way or the other. But that's certainly what I'm intending and I assume it's what everybody else is intending. I think all the conversations that have been held tonight indicate that. There's no way it's going to change. And I'm just trying it. to bring, you know, in the future when the five of you may not be there or Trisha. I sure hope the five of us are here in She's May. She's going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying here? So the ballot question is set by statute, and the article that authorizes the ballot question have to essentially say the same thing. So just adding that piece doesn't keep it in consonance with the, the ballot question. I understand exactly what you're saying, but the language almost has to be identical between the two right, of them. Right, that's why I bring yeah. it. Yeah. Past ballot question. This will be two thirds, one third. I, I, I just let's just run with this. Okay, Mr. Paley, I will give you the last word. Okay, the two sure, very good though. I don't want to hear any disparaging comments. Okay. <laughs> All right, very good. Go ahead. Should I leave? Then? No, no. <laughs> the last time you're here, you did make say something. I didn't catch it until the end, so that's what I'm saying. Go, I'm giving you the last word, Norm. But the three percent CPC is going to be there anyways, right? So it's three. It's three percent on a bigger number. Two seventy-eight. Right. It's going to continue on, on the two seventy-eight plus whatever we were paying mm -hmm. before. That's absolutely right. But that's correct. You know, obviously, that's also a separate issue. Just so we get, as we go forward, we have that figure. <laughs> yes. Correct. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All in favor. All right. Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Folks, thank you very much. <clears throat> Don't be so solemn. This is good news. You should be all jumping up for joy yeah, and awesome. going out there. Let's you get know, going. This is it. The, the other thing is, is a lot of people did a lot of work on this to get us here. People in the audience and people up here and over there. Do we have a ballot question? question? All right. Let's go to the ballot question. I um. So I gave you a choice. Um, like I should also one. say that town council reviewed both the article and these ballot questions. So. Um, and he's yeah. comfortable, and he's coming in tomorrow morning just 
to go over it again. I think it's got to be option one. How about three? It doesn't say capital, though. Well, we can add capital. You can add capital. So add capital after the uh, word um, administrative cost of operating. And after Cap town departments and then capital. Correct. And capital budgets. Do you want, where did you want to put it? So I say after um, town departments. People in the audience, please, please be quiet. What about so we could work. So general say, administrative and capital costs? Yeah. Yeah, and that's right. exactly. All right. And capital. So the, uh, I'm just going to move the ballot question. Shall the town, then we can. Wait, wait, you got a motion. Do you have the motion? Somebody's got to move. Add I the move the board place on the ballot. Capital after administrative and before Got the it. word cost. Got it. I move that the board place on the ballot for the town election to be held on May 7, 2011, the following question. Shall the town of Situate be allowed to assess an additional $2.2 million in real estate and personal property taxes for the purpose of providing for the general administrative costs and capital I was going to say general administrative and capital costs. Right. For general administrative and capital costs of operating the schools, police department, fire department, and other town departments for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2011. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 There we go. So you should be okay between the two of them. That's we got it. in consonance. Okay. Seeing that it's five of nine, let's move on to the next agenda item, which happens to be a discussion vote of the budget and articles continued from last week. The annual town meeting <coughs> petition, articles, Article 26, which is Musquashkit Pond restoration. I think Article 26 and Article 27 are from the same proponent. Or, uh, so why don't we hit them both up? They're both petitioners, uh, Article 27 and 26. 27 is Musquashka Pond Gate re uh, Remote Control. And is this Mr. Fritz? Fritz? You can have Al too. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Craig Fritz, 11 Mitchell Avenue. And you're here with two petition items, Article 26 and 27. Yes. And if you would like to briefly just explain, not so much to the board, but to the public, what you're petitioning. Uh, I don't know how much history I should give on this. There's been an ongoing problem with Musquashka Pond and, uh, and nuisance smidge insects. We've been trying for years to get a, a modified uh, flushing schedule, at least attempted, uh, and never had any success with that. We, the best we ever got was maybe once a month flushing for the pond through you know, the warmer months of the year when the winter months weren't even uh, the best. So um, it was never, it wasn't, I, apparently it was effective at one point in the past before uh, many homes were built around the pond and, and many leaky septic systems contributed to water quality problems. Uh, the, the original gates were placed at the pond back in the 1950s. The brook that connects the pond to the Gulf River was dredged out extensively, and a, a set of tag gates were put in place to, uh, to regulate the pond, uh, regulate the pond level and the tide flow, and to prevent storm surge from coming up the Gulf River. That was done, in, said back in the 50s, because there was a midge problem back then because the pond was shallow and brackish. Uh, at some point after the 50s, the, uh, the midge felt the problem redeveloped and uh, wasn't effectively treated, or wasn't being effectively treated by just opening the gates once a month. And the town went to the DEP, uh, DEP who <coughs> allowed uh, insecticide treatment on the pond annually. And after a number of years of that, I guess they, back in 1991, the director of, of DEP said, well, we can't go on like this forever. You people have to come up with a better treatment plan for the pond than insecticide in, for, in it every year. His actual, and you'll, you'll hear this, uh, you'll hear of an order from DEP uh, to the town of having to make improvements to the pond or fix the pond, and actually what he said was, 
I am concerned that the town is not pursuing the long-term solutions for the MITS problem, and then he, he urged the town to explore alternative management schedules for the tide gate openings, and then he went on to uh, inform us that there was um, state resources that we could avail ourselves of for, for expertise. Um, that was back in 91. N nothing really changed over the next year. Some studies were done. It, it would have been a simple enough thing to start even at the next day and, and say, well, we fleshing once a month isn't doing it, maybe twice a month or longer, or two weeks instead of two days. Anything like that, it was never attempted, and, and we had urged that that be tried, and it never was. Um, so you're looking basically to restore the pond levels, and one of your articles is to be able to raise it back up, have people in the neighborhood mon monitor it and keep it that way basically, to try to control the midge problem. And then the gates is the second article to be able to keep it closed instead of keeping it open or trying to keep it, yeah, keep, keep it open to keep the water in the basin. In probably essence. about half, half closed okay. to half open. All right. uh, so then that's, you've got all the required signatures to be able to put it on the article to go before town meeting. Um, questions from the board? Well, just Al's comments, I know this has been going on for years, but yeah. what, uh, it's a natural flushing, is that what the... Yes, you know? there's, there's quite a history going back, as Mr. Fritz has uh, indicated in his information to you, uh, going back to the millennium, really. Basically, uh, where we get, what happened at the beginning of uh, two, in the era of the 2000s, town formed a technical advisory committee which consisted of the DEP, the U.S. Wild, uh, Fish and Wildlife Services, NOAA, Mass Bay Program, the Mass Division of Eco Ecological Restoration, Marine Fisheries, Coastal Zone Management, and the Town's Conservation Commission formed this commission to look at restoration of the pond, which was seen as a Category 5 most polluted pond in the state of uh, Massachusetts, in the Commonwealth, rather. They developed a strategy which was to improve, that the basic problem with the pond was that it uh, was uh, a contained pond. It was meant to be an estuary. Uh, the lack of flow caused silting. The sewage coming in from abutting properties caused other forms of pollution. Uh, as a result, uh, insects known as the midge grew in that pond. The midge is, uh, it lives only in an environment in which there is uh, no predators and, and can live in a place where no, where no other uh, species can live. Uh, the town began treating that uh, <coughs> mid with a product called Strike, which is designed specifically for sewage treatment plants to treat <coughs> midges which grow in sewage treatment plants. Uh, the town was told to stop doing that. Uh, there have been lawsuits about this. Uh, the advisory committee concluded that maintaining twice daily flushing best affected the ecological restoration the pond and improved public health and safety by eliminating the difficulties that existed in the neighborhood for, for the 300 or so abutters. Um, frankly, given all of this background, the study and the documentation, it's very unlikely that the town, even with considerable expenditures of resources, would be able to obtain state and federal permits to require us to artificially maintain the level of this estuary. Um, it's, uh, we've, uh, would, would spend a significant amount of resources doing that. And so the Department of Public Works, at this point, it's a, a non-issue for the Department of Public Works. The pond, uh, by all re recordings by this technical advisory group, uh, is ecologically restoring. The marsh grasses are returning. The species are returning. Um, in addition, we're moving forward with the sewer uh, expansion to this area to eliminate the sewage um, failed second system sewage chain in the, in the pond. So that's where the resources of the town have gone to, trying to uh, eliminate the problem versus um, maintain it and, and uh, try to fix it with artificial means. So that's all I'd like to say. So. Sure. Mr. Fitz and your petitioners are looking to have that dealt with a town meeting and that's where you, you're going to... That's not the way we wanted to do that, but that's the way, that's the only avenue left to us. Uh, but that's what you've applied for and yes, that's you, yes. you, you've got town meeting to, to make the decision. So I think uh, from the board standpoint, Mr. Murray, if you want to ask a further question, I, I think... No, I just wanted to, as the liaison of the Conservation Commission, and I've been involved in this discussion, I've spoken to every single member of these committees that 
Mr. Bangert's referring to, and and for a variety of reasons, uh, the, the 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 pond is is well on its way to getting much better because the gates have. You wouldn't know it for in my house. It's just in much better shape. Midges are going down. Natural grasses are coming back, etc. So, I would move that we don't support either Article 26 or 27. All right. I guess we should, to to in 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 fairness to the town meeting and the people of town meeting, we have to make a decision. I think the board should should vote if there's any discussions or questions from the board. Just a matter of clarification, Mr. Chairman, yep. if it may, that the article will go forward to town meeting. Yeah, absolutely. Regardless. Yeah, regardless absolutely. of what regardless. we do. Okay. It's going to go before town meeting either way, but we need to. So I'll, I'll move to reject Article 26 or not to support Article 26. Second for I don't know. I, mean, I, I just uh, I'll second know. for the discussion. Right, no. Second for discussion, Thanks, Mr. Harris. <laughs> I guess I just don't know enough about it. Um, you you disagree with the, with the, with what Al's saying that it's with it's getting it it's getting better. Uh, you know, I, there's got to be. You know, I'd have to agree that you know sewer in that area is 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 going to help huge. But half the time, the, the, uh, the north end of the pond is shallow. I realize so that. Half, right. the, half the time, the, water, the tide is out. When the tide goes out in the Squash Pond, it stays out for a week to 10 days. And we got open, exposed, reeking mud flats. It's, it's, it's nasty sediments that sit in the sun and bake. And it stinks. You can, you can smell it when you turn on the Gannett Road if the wind's right. Uh, you go into, you open your closet, take out a piece of clothing, you smell the pond. You go shopping somewhere, you get back in your car, open the car door, you smell the stinking pond 20 miles away because it's in your car, it permeates everything. Do the kids skate on it now? They Is it enough one, water? In the last two years, they had one day when they could skate on it. Because when, when I was growing up, it was always flooded that kids could skate on yeah, it. It was great skating when my kids were little. It's basically gone. You can't get to it with a canoe or kayak anymore. Recreational use is gone. Uh, skating or boating, because you can't get to it. You have to wade through mud. And well, it's, yeah, it's drive by and you can, you can see that, steep. right. Um, and, and we've been shut out of the decision-making process uh, all, all, all the way through. That's not true. And I'm, I'm going to take offense to that. And I'm going to interrupt you on this one. We've had public meetings on this. We've had public discussions on this. I've had phone conversations with you. I'm aware that Mr. Bangert has spoken with you. So for you to say that you've been cut out of the decision-making process on this is flat out inaccurate. It is. Not, I, this process requires uh, the, the process DEP requires. It's called the notice of intent and requires that uh, abutters be notified, a hearing be held, and uh, concerns are heard. I heard. When this NOI was placed, we came to the in front of the Conservation Commission. So you were involved oh, in the process. Hold on, Mr. Murray, let Mr. Sorry, we appeared before Thank the you, Conservation Mr. Commission, and they refused. They refused to listen to discuss the issue of having the gates open. They told us that was a done deal. As of what the decisions made, the trains gone down the road. When in fact that NOI was the very one that covers that, and when we got to the DEP appeal process, and it is under appeal at this point, DEP agreed with us that that is the heart of the issue, not muddying the water when you take the gates out, but having the gates open full time and lowering the water of the pond. Wouldn't Chap that? I'm sorry. Chapter 91 of Mass General Law says that you cannot change the water level of Great Pond without first getting approval. From DEP, Mr. Bangard changed the water of the pond, water level of the pond, and then tried, to, then avoided going to DEP. Did not go to DEP until I informed them, and they sent an enforcement order out. And one thing that I would say is that it could very well, because I, I don't want to turn it into a debate. We could be here for a half hour because it's only on an article that we need to get to others. But let me just say this, okay? You've appealed it. The neighbors have appealed it. If DEP issues an enforcement legally it's going to come back to the town we're going to have to address it and you're correct if you're wrong then you're not obviously the town is 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 correct in its assessment going through the process what i would say is this okay and i know um if you live there i could imagine you know when i drive down the driftway when it's low tide it certainly That's there's slow. there's smell because of the mud um I know there's some people who would say well if you choose to live there that's one of the byproducts of where you live 
that's not necessarily solace to you, but I'm saying that's part of the situation where you're at. I also just want to say that, you know, when you look at it, I know that had there wasn't, if there hadn't been an artificial barrier put up, all the open water would be going in there to the pond on a regular basis in storms and what have you. And I think, just my own personal opinion, okay, and this is why I'm telling you, because I support Mr. Murray's um, motion to um, not support it. It's only because if I'm looking at it from an environmental, natural standpoint, water should be flushing in and flushing out. And the problem may have been created 50, 60 years ago when they closed it off to be able to keep a pond there and to retain it that way, but it's not a natural pond. And I'm saying let time over time, it will ameliorate itself. Unfortunately, to get there is going to be a problem. And that's my own personal opinion on it. I may be wrong, the, the, but I'm just the, telling you that's how I'm looking at it. That's all. The brook was dredged and the, and the gates were placed in the 1950s because there was a Mitch problem back then because there is a natural Mitch problem. That was then to remediate it. And the, and the width and depth of the, of the brook that's there now is nowhere, uh, is not compared to what was there back in the 50s. And you can see that from the U.S. Ge geological survey maps that were published and surveys that were done at that time. That brook was dredged out, and there, that the level of tide exchange that we get in there now is nowhere near what it was naturally. One thing, uh, one thing that I might suggest is that while we can reasonably disagree, you're not going to be happy about it, I don't suspect whatever happens at town meeting is going to resolve the situation. And I think probably as a town, in your section, your neighborhood, we're going to have to address it further in, in some way, shape, or form. Um, but I'm just only suggesting that because, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, in DP comes back, so be it. But I think for our purposes tonight, we want to make sure you, you've had a chance to talk to us. We'll take a vote on it because we have to at least so that you can present it to town meeting. And, Bring it to the town meeting. I mean, I think that's that's the one good thing that we have with representative government. You have a pure democracy of town meeting. People come out, get your neighbors out there, advocate, and there you go. The town will vote it one way or the other. The DP likes two things. They like their regulations to be followed, and they like the things to be resolved at local level as much as possible. And, and all I can say is I know, um, you know, John, I just want to, not to belabor the discussion, but one of the very first meetings I had when I came two years ago was in Lakeville um, with DEP on this issue. The acting director as well as several DEP staff were there. And I want to assure the board the town is doing exactly what DEP directed us to do at that meeting 18 months ago. So that's, I, I, this is our obligation. You may disagree with it, but that's what we as a town are doing. Now, if it turns out that DEP says something different that we can do, that's the process, but I mean, I just want to let you know, I don't want to give the misperception out there that the town's not doing what it's supposed to do. You may disagree with it. You may disagree and with I the appeals process, just, it's, but it's, that's, it's, that's it's where a, we stand. It's the degree, it's the extent of what they're doing. I think it's being overdone, and, and the butters are, are not being considered, and we live there, too. It's our environment, too. That's well, thank you. Okay. So we have, a, we, have two mo we have a motion. We have a second. <laughs> Further discussion, seeing none. Uh, support of Mr. Murray's uh, motion to not support both Article 26 and 27. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, those who are against it, say nay. It's unanimous. <coughs> Thank you, folks. God bless. Uh, moving on to uh, the next uh, petition article, Article 28, which is a general bylaw amendment on political science. And who are the applicants? Gentlemen, come on up. Sign for candies? Yes. Not to support. Oh, for both articles? Correct. Yes. Okay. I, I, I didn't yeah, you said both, right, Rick? I did. Otherwise, we'll go back and do it again. Okay. Thank you. Gentlemen, could you identify yourselves and your addresses? Uh, I'm John Whitaker, a member of the Democratic Town Committee, and <coughs> a voter and resident of Situate. Address. At my, oh, you want my address? Yeah, it's for our minutes. 594. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Whitaker. Thank you. And. Uh, I'm Kevin Butler, Chair of the Citra Democratic Town Committee, 38 Roses Lane. Okay. And, gentlemen, you're looking to put a new um, general bylaw in to see if the town will vote to amend the bylaws providing for political signs by adding the following sentence. Signs for, should be candidates. It says candies, so I don't think you want candies out there. Uh, who win at state fall primary elections may remain up until three days after the fall, the full general election or take any other action there too. Right now, if I'm not mistaken, after the 
primary, you have to take the signs down because we have a 30-day window of uh, the bylaw, which means if the primary is middle of September, after the primary, you take it down. If the general election being somewhere around November 4th, you can only set them back up October 4th. So you're trying to avoid the take down and put back up hassle for about two weeks, two and a half weeks or thereabouts. Would that be That's fair? Right. For the candidates that win the primary. Just, just a thought, and I, I, I agree, I think it's a, a good idea. Uh, not only is it, a, as you referred to, it, it's sort of certainly an inconvenience to take signs down and put them back up a week later or nine days later, whatever the case might be. It's also an enforcement issue. I mean, who's going to go, you know, I, I, would, I know that Neil Duggan has a lot more important things to do than count the number of days the signs are down or signs are up, and et cetera. So I think this eliminates uh, a problem that Neil certainly doesn't need. Other questions from the board? No. Great. Agree with Joe. All right. Well. Move to support Article 29, 28. I'm sorry, 28. Second. Seconded by uh, Mr. Um, Vignani, I think. Um, discussion, question from Mr. Paley. the override and against the override. And now we're treating political signs for candidates one way and signs that will also be at the election for another. Uh, this also precludes uh, uh, people running for selectmen or for any other office in town because it says in the primary, in, in his article, this only applies to candidates who have run in the primary, it doesn't apply to candidates running for any other political office. It should uh, bring all of the political signs with it rather than to divide them into categories. But it I'm sounds like that would be a good thing to add for an amendment well, on the floor of town meeting. Well, I mean, this is not our amendment. This is not our. Hold on, gentlemen. This is not our article. This is an article that they they proposed. But I understand what you're saying. I understand you're saying that maybe it's a, instead of being specific towards. Um, I guess they would be both state because the the, uh, the governor um, is Hold in the fall Hold as well as the uh, it's not the local it's the state and federal. This is our, our our petition applies just the state primary fall elections, those elections in which uh, we nominate as parties uh, Republican, Democrat, Green, and others candidates for governor, the legislature, the other constitutional offices, and when it's appropriate, the U.S. senator and Congress. This does not apply to town elections. It does not apply to a uh, campaign to support uh, a proposition. You raise a kind of an interesting question because you said that it, it, it's premised upon parties. Let's assume you take a third party candidate. Yes. I presume then would they have a primary? I mean, I, I think, for example, I one they would, example so of prominent third parties, the Green Party, they occasionally do have primaries. I just wouldn't want to preclude third parties, they're, they're people not, who want to go that way. No, I, but if they don't have a primary, then are they enabled to set up? I assume they would be. I mean, nobody's going to force it here. But, I mean, everybody who wants to run for a position should be able to put a sign up during the state primaries from primaries until the general election, I assume. Well, the, the, in, the intent is, I think, uh, if I may interrupt just a second, is, is that those who are going to be on the ballot in November should not have to take down their signs after the primary election in September. That's all I want to hear. Intent. Small, very small and liberalization of the present law. Okay. Fair enough. You might want to do more. I mean, it might make sense, but that's not the intent of this article. All right. Other questions? No. All right. Gentlemen, um, uh, all in support, say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Good luck at town meeting. Moving on to Article Number 29. It's an acceptance of the public way of Pine View, View Drive and Pine View Circle. Can we do that? Oh, we, um, we did the um, we did the layout, but this is actually the article itself that we have to accept. Okay. Al, do you want to just do we, both yes, these? This is the citizens' petition that uh, came in prior to the public acceptance process. Uh, I would suggest that you know, basically you support it, but then uh, indefinitely postpone okay. it. Apparently, it's going to occur on the town meeting agenda prior to the street acceptance. So if that passes, this will be withdrawn. 
Okay, we so this is after we then. Appear, but they can. Hmm? Yeah, the petitioner will have to withdraw it. So this is after the other ones we just did. Right. Numerically? Correct. Oh, this good. is Pineview yeah. Circle. You said it's before. Yeah. It's after. Right. It's right. I was looking at the numbers wrong. Right, because yeah. yeah. they've already the been countdown. endorsed by the street acceptance, but they also petitioned, yeah. and since we have to put it on. So if that passes, um, they'll just ask right. the petitioner to withdraw this one. So do we really need to support it, though? I mean, if, if we're not going to support, I mean, the one thing you'd hate to have is the other one not pass, and then well, I, I support this. To, yeah. We'll give it to one or the other. I mean, <laughs> I think that's probably what you should do that. I, I would say support. we don't want to support it. Yeah. I would say we support the other one which is the one that we're looking for. This right. one is just a petitioner trying to get it on. To me, that's just covering both. both Is there any hammer supporting it and then moving to, I don't know, I, I'm asking that, I don't know. Uh, uh, well, what do we do if we don't support it, I guess? Well, what if this what didn't pass? The other one? The other one. No, well, what if they didn't, the no, no. Agenda. What if they didn't go through the process <coughs> and they just put it on here? To Joel's point. Wouldn't. No, if, if they went through the process, we um, right. then it would have appeared earlier on because it would have been endorsed by the street acceptance committee. <coughs> they have not. They could have put it on here regardless. Yes, anybody can petition. So we don't want to support people that just want to throw their streets on the ballot. I agree. Okay. That's right. how I'm looking at it. We're supporting okay. it through the process, and this is an article I that see. doesn't support it through the process. No. Since, since, I'm I'm on a, it. since I'm on a roll on this stuff, I'll move not to support Article 29. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. Further discussion? Say none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Not to support, Ken. Move not to support Article 30. But this one was this, this one? is a little different. They, yeah, this is, I want to. Article this is, 30, the folks are here. They Let's have go not, to Article 30, which is acceptance of the right. public way of Old Mouth Road. Were they on the, were they on the other one? No. 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 Nobody was here for oh, uh, Pine okay. Drive. So let me withdraw my motion until I figure out what's going on here. She's <laughs> been here all night. <laughs> 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 Give it to me. Ladies, if you could just identify yourself and address for the Virginia uh, Newcomb, 6 Ocean Front Street. Situate. Kathleen Joyce, 25 Ocean Front Street, Situate, Pumrock. All right. Now, you're petitioning that Old Mouth Road be accepted as uh, um, What's others? and Ocean Front Street, Court Street, and a portion of River Street as public ways, correct? Okay. Um, in your article, it says these roads have already been brought up to standards as designated by the town at the expense of the residents and are willing to petition for acceptance on the Betterment Act, where the cost of maintaining and applying the roads are shared by the abutters in the town of Situ or take other action there relative thereto. Can I make a comment? Yes. Okay. Um, we have applied to DEP. We've done all the filings and everything. I have a DEP number. Uh, we've been to conservation. Conservation approved us. I have uh, order of conditions. And we have hired a contractor, but because of the weather conditions, okay, the road is f a frozen, so they haven't been able to bring them up to the town standards. Hopefully, as soon as the roads thaw, we'll be able to bring them up. Can I ask this? Because I'm the chairman of the, um, of the uh, Street Acceptance Committee. The, the chairman of the Board of Selectmen is also the chairman of the Street Acceptance Committee, so that's, I'm very lucky in that regard. <laughs> Won't have it much longer, but uh, having said that, you didn't apply to the street acceptance. Why not? We didn't know we were supposed we didn't, to. Exactly. Okay. okay. My there question. There was a phone call to you. Was it phone yes. Call to yes. You? yes. Yeah. And We've there been was trying to get emails to both of input. you that went. We asked for direction. What else needed to be done? No one responded. This right. arrived in the mail. Saturday morning. Saturday I morning this. with a star next to it. We had no idea what else had to be We're done. We're actually Except following ask. the recommendation of Mr. Banger. This is how he told us to proceed. Okay. But nobody said anything about going before any committee. So let me ask you this. You've actually, gone through. This was supposed to be an application to ask the town to allow this street, which cannot be brought up to right. the standards. Right. That's what it's supposed to be. We were told to write it the way it was written and submitted to you, and I apologize. Right. Okay. Um, not to say that you did contact us. We had a meeting, and we met here with ComCom to try to discuss things. So I don't want to give the impression you contacted me and we haven't acted on it. As far as going forward, I think my concern is, is that we need to make sure that we go through all the boards that need to go through. Um, and one of which is the street acceptance. And we had no idea. Having said that, uh, I'll get to you. I see yeah, it. Hold, hold, hold on. Hold I, I on. Just like to say, I do support uh, this petition. <laughs> I, I do support uh, these. I thought you were horse shack there, the way you're going up and down there. <laughs> uh, well, uh, the petition or 
arrive too late yeah. to go through street acceptance in time to get to town meeting in the lawful way. The issue is it has to go before the planning board, it has to be, a layout has to be made, it has to be filed with the town clerk. Notice has to be given, written notice and published notice has to be given to all of the abutters, all of the property it owners. It was, yeah. it's been done. And That's been done. Uh, I, I, they're slated to go through the process and be ready for the special fall uh, meet, special town meeting. meeting. And I think that would be a more orderly process that we could all get engaged in rather than try to preempt it in this manner because I think even if town meeting agreed, it would be deemed not accepted by the attorney general as a legitimate because we didn't do all the steps. So, so you're saying sp the special for the well, fall or the special for the spring? Hold on, Mr. Mayor. For the fall. Okay. Mr. Mr. Harris. Ready for the fall, working with you on getting the roads ready and acceptance. For instance, the planning board has 45 days. They would have to review these streets and see are they willing to how does it fit with our... They don't conform to the normal <coughs> street listings because right. they're not, and they never will conform. conformity and everything else. So, you know, right. I think we can work together on that and, and we'll do that for the town meeting. Mr. Harris. But I, you can't do it. I, you can't get them ready, in my opinion. For April. Okay. Sean. Is that acceptable to you? Because I know these women and their neighbors have been working I very, I think you should come hard. for lunch tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> and, drive the and bring your SUV or the biggest Hummer you can find, because it's the only way we you're going to get I, there. I, I realize. <laughs> and we I, have actually petitioned all of our neighbors collected money from all of them so that we could bring the roads up to the standards that were required. Paid to have and it posted twice. Went down to record a DEP. Right. I they mean, are at, anticipating I'm sorry, at, something mm -hmm. being done. Right. We were told we, could all, we only had to record it once when in truth when you have an order of conditions. It has to be recorded against each and every property. It was going to be an exorbitant amount of money at $75 a piece. Well, the cost is just escalating, gentlemen. We I, need I, to repair the road now. We've hired what, a contract. What we would ask then is that somebody come out and see what we've right. done because we will not be able to afford to do it again. Right. That's where we're petitioning to you. Well, this is what I think the, just what I'm looking at, and I, well, speaking for myself, is that can you wait a little bit longer? Nobody's saying no up here, except I think the problem we run no, into is if you go forward with this well, article, the board's going to have to take a position. No, I'll no. tell you my position on it, it's going to be no now. No. But I don't want to have to say that because I'm saying to myself, if we can just work a little bit longer on this, because there are certain parameters, I know, with trying to do the engineering, which the town's going to have to take on to do it, to be able to say these are the meets and bounds of what the town owns now. Agreed. So then you can say, those potholes are the towns, <laughs> not ours anymore. No. But if you go forward with this article, you're going to put the town in a position where it's going to have, at least I feel that we way. We didn't expect it to be this way. Like I yeah. said, we were applying, we were told to apply for a change in what was right. acceptable, not for us. The we know we're going to have to fix right. it ourselves yeah. now. And, and the thing that I was trying to determine was this. To bring it up to code, you couldn't do it through ComCom -Com because in order to put a road down with asphalt, they probably won't allow it because of a barrier beach, which is the problem we had. The other problem is that we have a dirt road that's going to need some form of granular stones and We've already been told what to deal with yeah. ComCom. That's going to be acceptable, but the problem is that doesn't get you up to the acceptable subdivision standards that so Chapter 44 says that. from the planning board. So from a town perspective, not just your roads, but all the roads that are private that are on maybe beach barrier roads, which includes all the way up and down the seaboard here, an ability for the town and through the residents to try to elevate the roadways to a certain condition that it, when the town takes them over through this process, that we're able to say this is what that road's going to have going forward. And there's going to be a cost factor to it, but I mean, that's, the town's going to have to figure that out. So I think that's what, that was the dilemma going back and forth. You're like a, between a rock and a hard place. Right. Um, Mr. Norton, did you have a just, question? You know, just that we really can't, it, it, we, we, we're in sympathy and we certainly understand where you're coming from. but. For us to, to, to uh, not follow the procedure tonight would be sending a message to the procedure about going through the Street Acceptance Committee. We're more surprised by this being yeah. here than you, you are. Know, not, for us, <laughs> not what we asked. We had no idea. For, for, for us uh, to, uh, to, to no, avoid that process would open the door for anyone that wanted a street acceptance just to come before us and get it 
yes or no. And, you know, I think we, we have a process in place. We, um, we have to go through it. The problem we're facing now is we have actually accumulated enough money mm -hmm. to have the roads brought up to standards. Mm -hmm. no, okay. we, no, no, well, you're misconstruing. <laughs> That's where you're wrong. But if we do this now, because the roads are deplorable. That's I mean, a repair. Okay, it's a repair. Okay. We have to go back again and solicit more money from all of these individuals because we're never going to be able to maintain these roads <coughs> until the next, until until the next fall, fall. Yes. Which is a good reason to support the override because we have roads on it. So I'm telling you right now, <laughs> you know, it's a very good sell to your neighbors. <laughs> Mr. Murray. I just, I, I, like Joe said, we're all on board here. And, you know, from the ConCom angle, I know the rock and the hard place What's you're stuck What's our on. next step? So I, it, my, my thing is I don't want to have to vote no on this because I no. support the whole goal here. No, because it's worded incorrectly. It yeah, and all that. It should be to so, ask the town to so open up their... You can create a new bylaw right. yeah, yeah, yeah. on conforming and that's roads. Gonna, what's right? going to what's and that's, going to allow our road to be sure. accepted? So that's end. that's going to take time. So I think I'm you need hoping to withdraw I'm hoping that this gets withdrawn. So then a new one can be Thank put you. forth for the next fall. You can work with Mr. Banger in the meantime. We might be able to figure out some way where your work that you may or may not be doing coming up can help you, even in the context of next fall. But I don't want to have to vote no on this because I want to support you because I know what you're up against. So I don't know how more I can it, choreograph that. So you want that. us to withdraw. <laughs> I yeah. think by withdrawing, it, we have another Without meeting in April, which can be on the agenda with the street acceptance, OK? What's our next step? What do we do? Um, contact with we already, You've already filed with street acceptance, right, Al? So we'll put yes, you on the agenda. March 22nd or something. So like we'll that. put you on the agenda on the 22nd, then. I understand their problem with having to it's very difficult to go collect money from neighbors when there's yeah. angst with like love whether they should take it or not. The street acceptance process includes a financing mechanism. We know so that. Then we will take care of it for you, right. and then people will then it'll show up on tax bills as small increments. Benefits, right, right, right. And so that is is a way that I think will accomplish what you want better than run and take donations. No, that's what we're trying to get okay. to. This is the repair for this right now. This is just to bring it up we to can't speed drive down for the acceptance yeah. under a better. Get it there for the summer and then, you know, you can start through the process and then we'll explain exactly how the betterment thing works and it'll be I, far we understand easier that. for you. We withdraw the article, gentlemen. So uh, I just, I want well, to be clear that as long as somebody's in the street acceptance process, we're going to maintain that road, plow that road. We'll plow, we'll plow yeah, we'll plow it, right. So, you're um, in the process. so you're the, in the, the process. only other thing, aside okay. from all this, is the window. I don't know if you see all those maps up there. So even if the board decided, oh, don't go to street acceptance now, we'll make an exception in this case, you've already missed the clock for t t town meeting because the board has to have two separate public hearings. It has to be with the planning board for a certain period of time. So um, I think if you withdraw now, because even the way you've worded this is a little dicey, what the street acceptance committee will do was they'll word it for you and so you'll be good to go and then they'll plow it until the spring comes and then work with you on that as long as you're in the process so i think you'll be fine <laughs> yeah i've been i was down there too. Oh, maybe they'll ago. put that plow down to kind of fill them in a little bit. we'll see uh, right. some more sand gravel um That's your understanding ms doby um i've watched these women work on this for so long and so hard is there one person who will commit to mentoring them through it on a regular basis? I think we said that. It, yeah, I'll, I think it, we said it, it, that. I'll raise his hand. I'll try. I'll try, but it, it's yeah, a tough time to for me. You know, I'll I got your calls. Hand. I got them. You know, right. unless you want someone else. No, we, we just, no, we just want some direction. As I say, that's all we were looking for. You've got all one right. more hurdle to go through, and I don't think it's going to be too difficult. So, just a little bit more time. So, what would you suggest? We just leave the holes the way they are until fall, or ask go out. ahead and go. ask out. We're on the agenda for March 23, 22, whatever that day is. I'll we'll call. be notified Abby, on this. I'll call you. Yeah, I'll call you. Talk about this. I can't take it off the warrant though. It's too late. They'd so have, they have to withdraw. They'd have to withdraw. They would have to withdraw to town floor. Okay, so you have to at town <coughs> meeting. Somebody's got to stay till the very end, and say they're withdrawing the article, right? Or they can tell them moderate at the beginning of the meeting. I don't know how you do it here. 
have you could move it up to us. Well, I'm sure they'll be attending can't all of town meetings. Can't oh, we take it out of order. No, I won't. I'm going to be in a room. It's already a part of the warrant. It's already a part of the warrant. You can't eat all the way from the ballot so that you've petitioned it. I do think. Rick will do it. Rick can tell you it's a safety issue going over that road now. We don't question that. See how a cruise gets done. No. All right, we got it. They, they, they don't. don't. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's we'll have a let's discuss that on the twenty second, twenty third, whatever the meet the meeting, uh, the uh, street acceptance. Okay. And now uh, we'll talk to you, Kathy. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Ladies, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Aruba. waiting this late too for us. Send us a postcard from Aruba. Right? <laughs> <laughs> She's going, not me. <laughs> All right, moving on to the annual town sure meeting articles, Article 23, acceptance of public way of Blossom Street. We discussed that earlier, right? I think we have to vote on it, though, yeah, right, Yeah, we, we have to vote on it, right. right. Wait, didn't we do this? Move to accept Article 23. Second. Seconded by Mr. Uh, Harris. <coughs> Further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Article 24 is uh, acceptance of the public way on Quarterstone Lane. Move to accept Article 24. Was that, Second. Was that one of the, excuse me, just, was that one of the, was it? No, no, no. Let me uh, explain. It's uh, first by uh, motion by Mr. Harris, seconded by Mr. Um, Mr. Murray, mm -hmm. discussion. Mr. Norton, um, no, this wasn't a part of our discussion today. We've discussed it in the past, although was it open? It was open for a public hearing, and there was nobody here to discuss it. That was earlier, I, right? I guess my question, have they gone through the process? That's yes, they okay, have. Okay, fine. That's, they my, have. that's my question. Okay. These are, there are four streets that okay. have gone through no, it, and no this problem. is the second one. No problem. Uh, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Move Article 25. That's acceptance of public ways Pine View Drive and Pine View Circle. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Further aye. discussion? Say none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Those are supported. Now, move on to uh, item agenda item number 12. It's a discussion vote of the legacy funds reserve for appropriation. Um, this is um, part of the legacy funds from Gates uh, that is left over, if I'm not mistaken, right, uh, Tricia, in the amount of $166,000, um, thanks to the hard work of um, the school committee. I think Mr. Johnson uh, was <coughs> instrumental in doing it, and um, Mr. Donlin. Um, and at this point, these are funds that we can allocate however we'd like. Um, I think the question is, um, it's 166 that could go and help the school budget. And I see um, Mr. Ebert I, and Mr. Hayes, thank you gentlemen for being here. I appreciate the school committee supporting it for uh, this, our, this agenda. Motion. Discussion from the board, please. Just a motion. We mentioned earlier during the override process, this would be a way, I think, uh, to supplement uh, in a small way the, the school's shortfall. So I would move that uh, 165 thousand dollars uh, be appropriated to the school. Second. second. Actually, it's a hundred and sixty-six thousand and fifty-six dollars. No, it is. So uh, ma moved to amend, right, Mr. Murray? That was your motion yep. to amend. Okay. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Yes. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Gentlemen, thank you. Um, so what this will do is under Article Five, which is the operating budget, the school number will be that amount. The school number will be that amount higher. Mm -hmm. So whatever your number is now, add the 166, 156 to it. It will show in the warrant with that in it. 166056. Right, and then it will come out. I guess it's not forever, right? It's no, just, it's just one, one year. So one year. It, so you'll be 166 theoretic theoretically short in FY13, but it will be right in the budget in um, for the annual. Okay. Um, appointments for Mr. Clarkson. Who would like to make a motion? Move the board select and appoint John Clarkson to the Water Resources Committee. Second. Se seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Move the board of selectmen adjourn the meeting at. Uh, oh, hold on a second. I think we have other, other business. No, we don't. Nope. Do we? Oh, we do. Sorry. But there's yeah. an amendment on that, Kim? Sorry. So, sorry, I, I just I have to go back to Article Number 30, um, which was the acceptance of public way over. We need to have a. Yeah, we probably should vote on it because we didn't. I think we need to vote on that. So. So vote not to support. 
I think we, yeah, I think we, we, yeah. we, we, we went in the direction of not to support, yeah. Yeah, we have to. Yep. Uh, so, did you just move it? I'll second, second it. Whatever. Move not to support by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Mr. Harris. Further discussion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Kim, thank you. That was a good catch. Now move to adjourn. Is that what it was, Mr. Murray? Yeah, 940. 940? Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, folks. Thank you. Thank you, John. <coughs>